Boston New York Rangers first meeting of the season Sabres coming in riding a five game unbeaten streak with three wins and two ties they've lost only once in their last seven and this man Pat LaFontaine has 10 goals 30 points and he's on a 10 game point scoring streak hey, what's interesting too is the fact that he has as many assists this season as does Mario Lemieux Big Mario huh? even though Mario of course has more goals than anybody else but still that just tells you about the talents of Pat LaFontaine you go into a game your scouting report revolves around LaFontaine and you certainly do the best to take the body to try and slow him down Mario had an off night last night only had two goals and no one, assists one taken away though oh, could have had the hat trick John Muckler he went to Buffalo said I'm going to be an administrator it's in the front office then last year came downstairs took over for Rick Dudley and he's still behind the bench as head coach and director of hockey operations now we have a special presentation at center ice for the sharp electronics New York Rangers player of the month six goals and 13 assists for a team high 19 points while registering a nine game point scoring streak from October 12th to October 29th is number 11, team captain Marc Messier. The Sharp Electronics Player of the Month and to tomorrow's Children's Fund goes Thank you. one color TV and one VCR. Very nice. Marc Messier, great month for him. Great start to the season. Right now, we are set for the singing of our national anthem. Let's go back to center ice and John Amarante. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight all the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave or the land of the free and the like a sellout crowd here at Madison Square Garden to see the Buffalo Sabres and Darren Popa who is enjoying a resurgence this season John he's really come back to top form he's been their best goaltender from day one of camp right through to now you see the record eight four and one what he has done more than anything else this season is stay on his feet standing straight up instead of down on his knees as the record is four one and two pardon me but he's much better on his feet and Mike Richter gets the call for the Rangers Mike Richter continues the alternating system of Roger Nielsen four and two on the season his last game was a loss against the Quebec Nordiques last Thursday night Dan Marawelli is the referee tonight first time he has had both these teams Rangers open up with Mark Hardy who has trouble with the puck and sends it back to the goaltender Colin Patterson number 17 in the lineup tonight used as checking forward John Muckler likes to use him against the Rangers also in the lineup is number 13 Yuri Mylev, who is a line mate of Sergei Nemchinov for six years they are very close friends Sergei did not play in the third period on Saturday Saturday night in Montreal with Nemchinov playing here against Corkum the other center iceman that certainly tells you I would think that Messier's line will be against LaFontaine and we'll have to watch for that that'll be power on power and it could decide the game here comes Nemchinov on a breakaway he moves to the net he shoots and a save made by Pupa center down in front and taken back by Patterson sends out my left my left moving in against Hardy 
Hardy and Patrick, Nemchinov, Gartner, and Erickson. That shot taken by Corkum, a save made by Mike Richter. Big start for Nemchinov after being benched for the first time as a Ranger during the third period in Montreal on Saturday night. Gets himself a partial breakaway. He was stopped, but it's a good start for him. Both teams change lines. The Rangers send on Messier, Graves, and Amante with Leach and Bukaboom. And Bob Sweeney is on for Buffalo, wearing number 20. This is Tony Amante spun around by Carney. Shot from the point by Bukaboom goes wide. Buffalo with Bob Sweeney, number 20. Victor Gordiuk, another line mate, former line mate of Sergei Nemchinov, number nine, is playing the right wing. Former Ranger Randy Moeller on the fence with Keith Carney. Carney, number six, moves the puck to Brad May, number 27. Sweeney picks it up. Now Randy Moeller moving in. Back for Sweeney, a little behind him. Leach breaks it up to Amante. There's the Messier. Messier against Keith Carney. Messier to Graves. He's checked. In comes Leach. It's taken away by Moeller. Back hands it out. And Pat LaFontaine, it's a two-line pass. So, that's not Messier opposite LaFontaine. It looks like it's going to be either Waite or Turcotte. Well, LaFontaine just came on. Let's see, Messier is skating around, and uh, he's staying on. Here's the Rangers lineup tonight. Scratch from the lineup. Joey Koser, Phil Bork, and Randy Gillen. Peter Anderson still out with an injury. Mike Richter in goal. John Van Viesbrook, the backup. Well, this is interesting. This is a a good, good, I think, a situation where Turcotte centering King and Broughton, it, it, they're asking, the Rangers asking them to do a job and shutting down the LaFontaine line, bumped them, forecheck, keep LaFontaine's line off balance. The key is not to get trapped deep in the Buffalo zone and allow the speed of LaFontaine and McGillany to beat you. But this is an interesting ask by the Rangers for this line. That puck carried off the corner boards is clear aside by former Buffalo Sabre Jay Wells. McGillney number 89 with Andrew Chuck number 25. Here's Andrew Chuck tried to wrap around and slid it wide. He broke off the boards beautifully. Big and strong Dave Andrew Chuck in his 11th year in the NHL has had seven seasons of 30 or more goals. Turcotte feeds King. King shot a save by Pupa. He's got it in the pad. See Pupa stand up. Last year he would have been down on his knees to make that save. That's the difference with his goaltending, and it's working for him very, very well. The other thing, too, is he got rid of those foam type goal pads, now wearing the regular goal pads that are fold with, uh, filled, pardon me, with either deer hair or horse hair. See the Rangers break out of the zone quickly. Andrew Chuck had a scoring chance. The Rangers didn't allow him to score. Then it's a two on two, and you see Pupa staying right up high, standing tall on the play fifth full season in the NHL for 27 year old Darren Pupa who started RPI That's friends of their Polytech Broughton comes free with a puck his shot was blocked by Mike Ramsey number five Puck moved up the boards by Howard Chuck then sent back the other way by King here's Turcotte in the puck Turcotte checked by Howard Chuck Puck knocked away by Ramsey. Howard Chuck sends it ahead and out it goes. Howard Chuck number 10 with former Islander Randy Wood number 19. And Wayne Presley number 18. Turcotte to Broughton. Broughton moves in. Quick snap shot. Saved by Puka. Rebound loose. Cleared aside by Ramsey. The veteran Mike Ramsey. Played on the 1980 U.S. Olympic team. That puck put out in front for Wood. But a good checking job by Jay Wells. Tied up Randy Wood. Looks like the Sabres coming right back with a LaFontaine line. After sitting down for about 30 seconds, Muckler throws LaFontaine right back on the ice with Andrew Chuck and I'm sure McGillney. Andrew Chuck against Hardy. Andrew Chuck goes down. Patrick along the boards, moves it ahead. He bounces out of the zone. So what this does is get this high-powered line against the Rangers' so-called fourth line with Domi, Waite, and Kovalov who doesn't have a lot of experience. So you see what Muckler's trying to do, change on the fly because he's on the road to get his matchup. That's an offside, almost kept in the zone by Alexei Kovalov. 16-16 to go, first period, no score. Our co-coach of the Edmonton Oilers, John Muckler. The team led the Oilers for the championship in 1990. And Chinoff centering pass, but Gartner was tied up by Corkum. And Chinoff with the puck again, moves in his backhand to his block. Erickson gets to it. Now Gartner comes out of the corner. 
up the boards. And cleared out of the zone by Colin Patterson. Back forward is Joe Sorella. Ooh, big collision with Yuri Kmyla. Here comes Gartner coming in against Doug Bodger. Pass back to Nemchinov. He looks, he shoots wide. Around the boards is kept in by Wells. Another quick change on the fly for the Sabres as they try to get LaFontaine's line on the ice once again. They want to play him every other shift. The, don't forget one thing with these longer commercial breaks. There are fewer of them, but with the longer breaks, it's almost like a one-minute rest period. So you get to come right back with your top line. You think Mario Lemieux enjoys that? Mm. Or the Pittsburgh Penguin coaching staff? The teams with the more, with the more skilled the players, if they're coached properly, they will be the, the, the benefactors of that system. Bouncing puck, gloved by Richter, holds on with McGillney right in front of him. 15.07 to go in this first period. Tonight, the debut of a new show right here on MSG Network, live from the play-by-play -play with Mike Francesa. And he'll be joined tonight by Marv Albert. Mark Messier will visit with him tonight. Pat LaFontaine and other guests. That's following New York Rangers hockey tonight, live from the play-by-play -play right here at Madison Square Garden, the beautiful play-by-play -play lounge. And it's great to have Mike Francesa. He'll be up yes. with us uh, in the second period. <laughs> Got to <coughs> jump on his case a little bit. He had some fun today. George Young wouldn't uh, wouldn't go on the radio with him. Well, <laughs> he gave George a shot. Yeah, sir, George did. gave it back. <laughs> Quick shot, hit the outside of the net. That was Wayne Presley, number 18. Came over from San Jose. Save Richter, rebound is taken wide. Sent back to Ramsey, scores! Richter was down, could not recover as the Sabres got to the rebound and Ramsey with a shot from the point gives Buffalo a 1-0 lead. This is the down low coverage the Ranger coaches have been working with the Rangers on and it's the down low coverage that breaks down here. Good hustle by the Sabres deep in the Rangers zone. You don't see the body being used by anyone and then Ramsey will end up open. He's got to go high here knowing Richter's down. He does so. Top corner as Mike Richter reaches. Can't get the puck. Now Richter goes down here to rob Howard Chuck or at least knock the puck away. Beautiful pass out. There's the shot up top that Richter can't snare. One nothing Buffalo. They did it by working the Rangers deep in the Rangers trail. Across the line comes Bob Sweeney. Sweeney was picked up on waivers from the Boston Bruins. He's really been playing well. He's a plus 12. He's battling Patrick for the puck. Gordiuk centering. Richter hugs the puck to the post. And stops play on the deflection by Brad May, former first round draft pick of the Sabres. Brad May had over 300 penalty minutes last year, a team record, rookie record for the Sabres. He wants to get into the scoring column a little more. Fewer penalties, more scoring. That and he's means, done that. He's got five goals. That means more money, generally. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty good arithmetic, isn't it? <laughs> it adds up, right? <laughs> James Patrick with a puck. Moved up the boards and tipped out of the zone by King. Broughton gets to it. He's bumped along the boards by Ramsey. And Greg Brown, number 15, clears it out. Sabres still without Peter Svoboda. Who's nursing a knee injury? He took warm up, thought he would be able to play. Can't. So the Sabres have Brown in the lineup. He's on the ice now, number 15, brought up because of the injury to Savoboda. The Buffalo goal was Mike Ramsey, his first. The cheer was for the hit by Broughton on Ramsey. Ramsey got his first from Howard Chuck and Wood at 517. 1330 to go on the first. Sabres leading one to nothing. Hoopa leaves the puck for Ramsey. He's pumped by Graves. Messier moves in, hit by Colin Patterson. Their former adversaries went from the Smythe division. Amati for Messier. And Messier was with Edmonton, and Patterson was with Calgary. This unit of five right back on the ice for the Rangers. They were the unit of the of five that were on the ice for the Buffalo goal. The Messier line with Leach and Bukaboom. Bukaboom with a center ice hit. Leach carries the puck in and shoots wide around the boards. Messier there to stop it. Moves in against Greg Brown and centers. Off the stick of Amante. Graves gives it back to Leach. Leach spins past Patterson. Moves in and sets up Messier. Saved by Pupa. Puck taken by the Sabres. Yuri Kmylev and he clears out to Patterson. Behind the back passes to Doug Bodger. Bodger leaves it for LaFontaine. Ooh. 
big hit by Messier on Keith Carney. Oh, man. The defenseman went down hard. It was not Bodger. It was Carney who carried in right. and was leveled. Colin, Pat Colin Patterson, pardon me, came through the neutral zone, dropped the puck back to Carney, and as he made his pass, Messier came by and nailed him, knocking Carney down. You'll see right here, Carney with the puck. He'll drop it back to his left, and Messier moves right in, catches him with a shoulder in the chest well after the pass had been made by Carney. And I don't think Carney was expecting a, a hit at that point. Man, he got one. 12 37 to go in the first. Sabres leading one to nothing. Tonight's overhead camera shots are being brought to you by the Upper Deck Company. Nobody does hockey like Upper Deck. And Chinoff and LaFontaine for the faceoff. Rangers control. Hardy and Patrick. And Chinoff, Erickson, and Gartner for the Rangers. Gartner sends it out. LaFontaine is there. Richter is jumping up to glove it, but the puck into the zone before the Sabres have cleared out. And they're offside on the play, stopping the action. Sabres leading one to nothing. They have three shots on goal, four for the Rangers. Brand new ice here for the second time, I suppose. The first time when the season began. And this is the second time what the people have done here in Madison Square Garden is try to make the ice a little more dense, thicker, less air in the in the ice. You know how they tried to explain it to me? It's like buying a chocolate bar that has all those little air holes in it. Right. That's what it used to be like. And now it's like buying a chocolate bar that's pure milk chocolate. In other words, a lot thicker and a lot harder. You well, understand what I'm trying to say? When you say chocolate well, bar. Well, I get into <laughs> why, do you, why does your, you have a big smile and your eyes light up? Well, it's Halloween. I had my kids throw the, I had them throw the rest of the candy out. I couldn't take it anymore. <laughs> Patrick comes out of the zone. Gartner's got it. Sabres have Howard Chuck. On with Randy Wood and Wayne Presley. Keith Carney is back on number six with Randy Moeller. Erickson for the puck. He's checked into the board. Chinoff is there. And whistle stops play. 11 41 remaining. Wayne Presley, former Chicago Blackhawks, spent last season with the San Jose Sharks. There's Greg Brown. Two-time U.S. Olympian in 1988 and again in 1992. What about this play in the 92 Olympics, John? Well, you were there. This play was a play where Matt Naslin comes in. You talk about a hard hit where Naslin left his feet. Brown was out cold before he hit the ice, then hit his head on the ice. Naslin got thrown out. You saw his reaction. Brown was battered, yet the kid came back and played mm. the next game or later in the tournament. He's a courageous kid. He played well for Team USA in the Olympics. His brother, Doug, belongs to the Devils organization, playing with the Devils. Well, nice to see Greg up and playing with the Sabres. Up and down with Rochester and Buffalo. Here's Kovalov moving. He's bumped by Ramsey. Gives up the puck to McGillney. Now it's Greg Brown with it. Not too many people can say they played the two Olympics. John. Brown is one of them. McGillney hopping past Wells gets to the puck. Centers and Wells there to intercept. Ty Domi on with Doug Waite and Alexei Kovalov. And a penalty call. Domi draws it. Waite centers. Taken by Sorella. His shot deflected wide. Kovalov sends it back to Messier. Rangers have an extra skater on. Now the whistle stops the play as LaFontaine intercepted the pass. But Domi draws the penalty on his second shift of the game. Seems as though every game Domi is drawing a penalty, a power play for his club. You'll see the, the puck in the neutral zone. Domi kept working, kept going. As the bigger player, Andrichuk, used his reach and the stick to draw and try and slow down Ty Domi. So the Rangers go on their power play. It's ranked number 16 in the league. The penalty killing for Buffalo, ranked number two. They've been an extremely aggressive unit. They run all over the place in every zone. The, the defensive zone, the neutral zone, the offensive zone. <laughs> they just flat out go for it. So it should be an interesting look. Hooking at 9-10. First power play of the game. The Rangers have scored five power play goals in the last four games. Five for 20 over that span. Messier with Gartner and Amante. Leach and Turcotte for the power play. Sabres get to the puck and Ram rather Bodger clears it. It's Bodger and Boucher for Buffalo. Philippe Boucher, rookie defenseman number four. 
with Bob Corkum, number 29, and Bob Sweeney, number 20. Leach carries in, drops to Gartner for the shot that's blocked by Boucher. Bounces in front, missed by Amati. Leach has the puck. Leach checked by Sweeney. Puck intercepted by Boucher, sends it around the boards and stopped there by Amati. Now to Leach, fan on the pass, knocked away by Sweeney. Chases after it, out comes Richter. To bang it off the glass and out of the zone, Leach. Off the corner boards, Gartner against Bodger. Back to Amante, kicks it ahead to Gartner. To Amante in the corner. Presley and Howard Chuck on now for Buffalo. Pass across to Leach. Checked by Howard Chuck. Now Messier's got it. Howard Chuck after him. Turcott winds up his shot blocked by Presley. And it's cleared by Bodger, but into the bench of the Buffalo Sabres. Aggressive. They'll bring it back for a face -off. Aggressive. Bodger, the left defenseman, was out at his own blue line chasing down the puck while his team shorthanded. That's the formula the Sabres use, and it seems to be working. As they're ranked number two, only Calgary with a better penalty killing record than the Sabres. Edmonton is ranked number 24. Now look at this. Look at Bodger. He's a left defenseman. Now he chases right out to the blue line. I mean, all the way to the blue line. That's called being aggressive. You don't see any box there. <laughs> it's the Rangers' power play this season, 13 for 78. They've had 13 more chances to this point in, after 12 games and scored one fewer goal. It's been a sloppy power play, even though they are scoring. You know, you're looking at more than a goal a game on the power play, but the... The power play just hasn't been sharp. You don't see the sharp passing, the quick quick passing, and a lot of times they don't win the battles along the boards. Shot by Waite goes wide. Waite, Graves, and Kovalov on with Patrick and Leach. Patrick off the boards with the puck. 30 seconds to go on the power play. Kovalov makes his way in. His shot was blocked. Bodies down all over the crease. Ramsey was there. So was Moeller. So was Pupa. I think it was Ramsey that Kovalov worked on. Patterson shoots and he scores. Colin Patterson with a shorthanded goal, the first shorthanded goal given up by the Rangers this year, and Buffalo leads two to nothing. Patterson, a former Calgary Flame, has always been known as a defensive specialist. Prior to his play, though, the Rangers watched Kovalov snake his way around Ramsey, then snake his way in front around Moeller, and the puck stayed outside the left goal post. There you see Waite trying to find it. Now, when the puck goes back here, it was Patterson that chipped it out. And you see the Sabres in the neutral zone battle and find the puck. Randy Wood and Patterson get the job done. And that shot by Patterson, as you saw, went off of Mike Richter. Just hustle. You see Wood taking the defenseman leech. Patterson picking up the puck, trying to use Patrick as a screen, which he does well here. And you see now a 2-0 Buffalo lead. So once again, the Rangers falling behind early. Rangers Power play has only five seconds remaining. Had gone five straight games scoring the first goal of the game, and then boom, in Montreal. And here, the other team scoring not only the first goal, but the second goal. Team's back at full strength. Patterson from Wood, a shorthanded goal at 10.55. Ramsey and Patterson. Two players not noted as goal scorers. Very unlikely candidates. Giving Buffalo the lead. Gartner is tied up by Bodger. The puck loose along the boards. Brad May lost it. Nemchinov to Gartner. His pass blocked. Erickson looking for it. May gave it away to Nemchinov. Back for Gartner. It's broken up by Boucher. And Howard Chuck comes out with it. Howard Chuck and Presley. Howard Chuck pulls up with Bukaboom there. Pukaboom forces him out of the zone. Saber defense so far, strong in front of Pupa. You see the Rangers trying to work the puck into the slot, and so far, not a clean shot. Amati, he scores! Amati outworked both Buffalo defensemen and put it past Darren Pupa. And it's a two to one game. Moeller and Carney, the two defensemen, nice pass through the neutral zone, and the Rangers needed this. You see Carney move across. Moeller thinks that Amante is being checked, but Amante with a reach and the strength in his wrist, he's able to snap the shot. Look at the long reach. The puck is out a long way from his body, and he found a way to reach out and just snap the wrist, surprising Pupa. So 
both goaltenders giving up, guilty of giving up goals they should have stopped. At least I think. I concur, does. yes. 7.45 to go. Penalty call. Messier is pulled down by LaFontaine. Holding is the call. Rangers find some life. A goal by Amante and a power play coming up. Things happening in a hurry. First, the Rangers' goal. Mark Hardy with a real nice pass. It was nice the way Amante was able to gather the pass. Now he reaches out and just snaps the puck, hoping to find a spot. One time, Pupa goes down, and the puck sneaks through. Tony Amante celebrates. That's a big goal for the Rangers after being down 2 0, giving up the shorthanded goal. Amante from Hardy at 12 minutes, 17 seconds later. LaFontaine called for holding. At 12 17, second power play for the Rangers, they're 0 for 1. It was Messier who drew the penalty the first time he had been opposite LaFontaine this period. So you have a Monty getting a big goal and Messier drawing the penalty. A good shift for this line. Then you have a TV timeout, so the line gets to rest to prepare for the power play. Messier, Amonti, Gartner, Turcotte, and Leach for the power play. Sabres counter with Bodger, Boucher, Corkum, and Sweeney. Turcotte. Amante's goal came a minute five seconds after the shorthanded goal by Colin Patterson. Bouncer that stopped by Richter. Ooh. A derisive cheer <laughs> up from the crowd. I recognize that. <laughs> 7.20 to go in the first. Two to one Buffalo as Turcott fires in. Pupa stops it. Boucher plays it. Knocked down by the Rangers, Mike Gartner. Messier gets it back to Leach. Now to Messier. Big shot. Hit the post. That one went past Pupa. You know, the puck hit the post. Came back in front. Gartner was looking for the rebound, and some, for some reason, he couldn't get his stick down. I don't know if Bodger had a hold of it or not. Went off the stick of Gartner, hanging by the blue line. Gartner lost it. Randy Wood takes over. Wood and Patterson move down with Leach back. Messier comes back with Patterson. Leach deflects the shot of Randy Wood, and Messier picks it up. Now Turcotte with 50 seconds remaining in the power play. Six and a half minutes to go in the first period. Kovalov moves in. Left it for Messier. It was tipped by Moeller. And the Sabre is able to clear. Now Patrick and Sorella on for the Rangers. With Kovalov, Waite, and Graves. Four checking is Wayne Presley. Patrick's pass blocked by Howard Chuck. Presley has the puck moving in. Presley to the net. Saved by Rick Kariba. Hit the crossbar. That was another shorthanded situation. James Patrick had trouble with the puck, and then he bumped with Sorella, knocking both defensemen off balance. Oh, the power play having some problems here. Rangers power play close to giving up their second shorthanded goal against. You'll see the play in the neutral zone. Oh, pardon me. This is the play after the puck had been given away, and there's a rebound, and you see the puck going off the crossbar as Presley moved in. Here's Patrick. He'll make the play, the aggressive neutral zone penalty kill. Then Patrick and Sorella bump. Now they're both off balance. That gives Presley time to go in and make the play. Richter credit him for a big first save on that play prior to the crossbar. And now oh, they're checking the, uh, oh, I'll take a look at that again maybe. They're checking to make sure the buck did not go underneath the crossbar. I thought it hit the crossbar. Dan Marowelli checking with the replay official, John DeMonte. This is Presley with the original shot. That was a real good save. And here's the second one. Crossbar, no yeah. doubt about it. I think it's pretty clear. Remember when you're having good times with friends, use good sense and drink responsibly. Please, know when to say when. Reminder from Budweiser. Fans checking in on the replay official, John DeMonte. Talked about the Buffalo penalty kill. Buffalo penalty kill being aggressive in all three zones. Well, we've seen that. Man, you saw how aggressive they were. Wow. Bodger chases the Rangers right out to the to the blue line. You saw a shorthanded goal in which Patterson and Wood got aggressive in the neutral zone. And then on the last play here, you saw Presley. And I'm not sure who it was that created the turnover after, with the Patrick pass. I think it might have been Howard Chuck. Howard Chuck, possibly. And then the crossbar. This is a very aggressive penalty killing unit. Ranked number two overall. Six minutes to go in the first period. Two to one Buffalo leading it. 15 seconds to go on the Rangers power play. Once again, having some problems. Sorella moves it quickly. Kovalov, his shot blocked by Ramsey. Wait, 
His shot, score! Doug White, it's a power play goal! And the game is tied, 2-2! Doug Waite's third goal of the season, his first on the power play. That's the nice pass there by Graves out of the corner to Sorella. Now Kovalov gets the puck back after it's blocked by Ramsey, and that little pass sets Wade in home free, and Pupa drops down again. He's been so good this season staying up. Our both goals so far in this game, he's gone right down. On this one, he had absolutely no reason to do it. Watch him go down on one knee. The puck goes underneath the stick off the leg and in the net. The Rangers celebrate after they've tied it up. Big goal. So after the Sabres had the 2-0 lead at 10.55, the Rangers have come back in the last three minutes and 20 seconds and tie the game. And that here's LaFontaine coming in against Bukaboom. Bukaboom takes him down on a penalty call. The speed of LaFontaine oh boy. draws the hooking call. So now the Sabres, who are a tough power play team, will have the man advantage. Jeff Pukaboom in the penalty box. Two minutes for hooking at 14.39. 24 seconds after Doug Wade tied the game with his third goal of the season from Kovalov and Sorella at 14.15. And that came with two seconds remaining in the power play. Now the Sabres with a man advantage. Fontaine's pass comes across to McGillney, who missed it. Got upended by Messier. Patrick able to clear. Patrick and Hardy, Graves and Messier for the Rangers. LaFontaine, Andrichuk, McGillney, Howardchuk, and Bodger. LaFontaine is stopped by Richter. Buffalo has scored 13 power play goals in their last five games. Graves shoots, saved by Pupa. Rangers just want to shoot at Pupa every chance they get here, right? Remember, though, this power play is not nearly as good on the road as it is at home for Buffalo. Pass across through Andrichuk. Andrichuk had 28 power play goals last season. Player down, I believe that's McGill. No, it's not McGill. It's LaFontaine. Fontaine. He was holding his jaw. He was on the near boards in the corner. And it's difficult to see what has happened from this vantage point. Mark Hardy was the defenseman on that side of the ice. This should give us a good view of the whole play. LaFontaine moves in. Hardy's there. And the left elbow of Hardy catches LaFontaine right in the mush. Right in the mouth. I don't think there was a penalty to be handed out. And LaFontaine is up and skating on his own. Nothing's been called. Pat LaFontaine, of course, had that serious jaw injury last year when he was hit with the stick of, by Jamie McCown. He's up skating on his own, but he's not skating. Yeah. He, he's rather gingerly moving across the ice. You talk about the Buffalo power play, Sam. Number one on home ice, 36.4%. On the road, number 15, 13.5%. That's a pretty healthy drop. Yeah, that is a difference. But the same Sabres are dangerous. They've got great speed, great finishers. They have 21 power play goals this season. That's tied for third best in the league. Pittsburgh has 25, Winnipeg 22, Quebec and Buffalo 21. Four and a half minutes to go, first period, tied 2-2. 105 to go on the penalty to Bukaboom. McGillney for LaFontaine, so he's back on. Now it's Andrichuk. LaFontaine got a brief rest, sat down, said he was okay, jumps right back on. Nemchinov and Erickson on with Hardy and Patrick. McGillney's pass for LaFontaine. Good job by Erickson. I believe he lifted LaFontaine's stick, forcing the miss. Here's Bodger with the puck. Bodger carrying. Lead for McGillney. Leaves it for Andrew Chuck. His shot, he scores! He found the short side. May have hit the inside of the post. And Buffalo regains the lead with a power play goal. It's 3-2. Gives Buffalo now two specialty team goals, one shorthanded and one on the power play. Buffalo last season was ranked number one overall on the power play, and this one's dangerous. You see the puck move nicely into the Rangers zone, and Mike Richter not sharp. Just simply not sharp. That's two, two goals that on most days Mike Richter grabs a hold of. 
That shot by Andrichuk, it appeared to hit Richter's glove and ricocheted back into the net. So, 3-2 in favor of Buffalo. One of the most consistent performers in his NHL career, as we mentioned. Seven seasons of 30 goals or more. Dave Andrichuk with his ninth goal of the season, sixth power play goal. He had 28 last year. 28 on the power play last year. So Buffalo, after seeing a two-goal lead evaporate, regains the lead on the goal by Andrichuk. Here's Wells carrying. He's got Waite, Domi, Tovalov, and Sorella on the ice with him. Waite along the boards, tied up in the crowd. Waite still has it, keeps it alive, keeps moving. Now Sorella for the shot. Save made by Pupa. Ramsey sends it around the board. The goal was Andrew Chuck, his ninth from Bodger and McGillney at 16.08. We've got a penalty called here on the boards. I believe Ty Domi in the Buffalo zone takes the penalty. Tonight is the debut of live from the play-by-play. -play. Al Troutwig, what's going on? Well, Sam, a lot of people don't know where the play-by-play -play restaurant is. It is just off the 7th Avenue entrance from the Garden and one floor above. And it is an exclusive club here at Madison Square Garden. But starting next week, people will be able to enjoy lunch there. For now, however, it is the uh, weekday home of Mike Francesa and live from the play-by-play. -play. After all, Knicks and Rangers games. And if uh, Mike had a voice like mine tonight, uh, things would not be going very well, would they? But it's a, it's a beautiful place. And hopefully during the lunchtime here in the city, a lot of people will be able to enjoy the play-by-play -play sports bar and restaurant. Rangers logo is the, one of the first things you see. Thank you, Sam. Okay, Al. He's doing his Bill Clinton uh, <laughs> imitation. He's got exactly oh. what I had wow. a couple of weeks ago. Man, it's tough to shape. But live from the play-by-play -play debuts tonight. The beautiful play-by-play -play lounge here at Madison Square Garden. Mike Francesa, your host. We'll have sports and entertainment guests following all weekday Knicks and Rangers games. Buffalo power play. Ty Domi in the box for boarding. At 17.01, second power play for the Sabres. They're one for one. Bodger carrying in the feed to McGillney for a quick shot saved by Richter. And once again, here's the... Oh, Ranger, the of cheers. Ranger fans always noted as emotional fans, and in particular with their goaltenders. The goaltender plays well, they'll let him know. And if he doesn't play well, they'll let him know that too. McGillney has a great shot. Loves to use the wrist shot. Take a look at what he does well. He's, he's a tremendously strong skater. Great strength in his quadriceps. His best shot is the wrist shot. And he can shoot it in stride, which will surprise a lot of goaltenders. Plus. He'll use that shot and stride to use a defenseman as a screen. So McGillney on a roll here. You know one thing about McGillney, his last year did not score, actually has never scored a playoff goal. Hmm. And that's one thing that is dogging him. And probably dogging the Sabres. Yeah. 12 playoff Whoa. games, he has yet to score a goal, even though he has nine assists. But that's something I think that we may see a change with, with McGillney playing so well so far this season. Doug Bodger. McGillney got off to a slow start last year, and then after Pat LaFontaine got healthy, the two of them, and the three of them, with Andrew Chuck included, exploded. McGillney finished with 39 goals. Tough to find a better scoring line than this line, you know, aside from, of course, the big line in Pittsburgh with Lemieux, Stevens, and Yager. Joy Mullen, by the way, played last night his first game of the season. Uh -huh. It felt good about being back in the lineup. This gives Pittsburgh another dimension. Just a little more, right? To add to their powerful lineup. 150 remaining in the first period. Sabres leading 3-2. 48 seconds to go on the Buffalo power play. Graves and Messier on now with Patrick and Hardy. McGillney leaves it for Howardchuk. Moving in, pass tipped by Hardy. Howardchuk again. McGillney out of the corner. Pass across off the stick of Boucher. Now it's McGillney. Messier intercepting and breaking out with a puck. Messier with Graves. Goes back to Leach to kill some time. Leach takes the shot, hits the outside of the net. Graves had just cleared out. 
Chapman making the play onside. Uh, I don't think he has. No? Oh. <laughs> Buffalo Bench was very upset. I was going with the official rule. <laughs> <laughs> Puck knocked down by Bukaboom. He's battling Presley. One minute remaining in this first period. Puck along the board. Power play is over. Sabres now one for two on the power play. Randy Wood with a shot saved by Richter. Rebound, another chance blocked. Presley has it again. It's knocked away. But Carney turns. A deflection by Presley is a wow. save what by a, Richter. What a deflection of the midair by Presley. Wayne Presley having a big first period right there. Bob Corkum battling with Ty Domi. 45.6 seconds remaining in this first period. Al Trodwick standing by downstairs. Al, what's going on between periods? <laughs> Bob Page at the sports desk. Sam and JD with Telestrator highlights, yes. Oh, thanks, Al. <laughs> Good job. Rest that voice. The voice doesn't work, but the mind does. Huh? Will someone get him no. some hot tea Remember in a hurry? I, hot tea. Remember when I had the problem? Yeah. What, what did he say I was supposed to do? Remember the doctor? He talked to the doctor. Steam? Yeah. yeah. Baloney. It was a shot of something. Oh, yeah? yeah. A shot of well, something? Maybe he ought to have the shot of something now. <laughs> Live from the play-by-play, -play, it's Al Trotwick. 30 seconds to go in the first period. Jeff Bukaboom left the ice after that last flurry. And he left with David Smith, the medical trainer, so there could be a problem there. Gartner fires through the crease all the way across. 20 seconds to go in the period. Sabres come back. Randy Wood with Corkum and Carney. Patrick moves it up the boards. It's knocked down by Moeller. He gave it up to Hardy. Hardy outlets to Nemchinov with five seconds remaining. Nemchinov shoots, save, rebound at the side of the net. Good effort by Nemchinov. And the puck cleared out, and that ends the first period. Not a first period that the Rangers will be too happy with. Not a period that Mike Richter will be happy with for sure. Buffalo scoring the first two, Ramsey and Patterson, and then Amante and Waite tied it. Andrzejczyk gave the Sabres the lead at 16.08. Al will be talking with Jeff Pukaboom, we hope, in just a moment. Sam Rosen, John Davidson, and a struggling Al Trotwig here at Madison Square Garden. Al playing hurt tonight, and we're going to give him a little time off. We'll take a look at the first period scoring summary. Brought to you by Amtrak's Metroliner Service. 16 departures to downtown D.C. every business day. Mike Ramsey got it going for Buffalo at 517. Howard Chuck and Wood with the assist. Colin Patterson, shorthanded goal, made it 2-0 at 1055. A minute, five seconds later, Tony Amante beat two defensemen and Darren Pupa to make it two to one. Doug Waite's power play goal tied it at 14-15. Andrew Chuck at 16-08 gave Buffalo the 3-2 lead. Shots on goal, 13 apiece in the first period. Four for Nemchinov to lead the Rangers. Three Buffalo players with two apiece. And the Rangers have made a goaltending change to start the second period. Well, you don't see this often by the Ranger coaching staff. I believe it was only three times all last season. But the goaltenders, one of them relieved during a game, but Mike Richter just didn't have it. You could see it early. He was responsible for the three goals, two of them I think directly responsible for. So the Rangers make the change as they trail by one going into the second period. Shots were even, as you mentioned, Sam, at 13 apiece. Should mention too that Joe Sorella, that assist he got on the power play, his first power play point of the season. Underway second period. Rangers begin with Nemchinov, Erickson, and Gartner, Hardy, and Patrick. The Sabres counter with Corkum, Mylev, and Patterson. Then we have an offside as Corkum and Hardy get together. Defense Greg Brown and Mike Ramsey for Buffalo. There's Mark Hardy. You know, Al Trouble in the pregame show talked about his sense of humor over getting that what really was close to being a very serious injury. And I saw him in the airport. John and I were talking to him and said, Mark, uh, everything okay? He says, well, I'm sore. I said, uh, how the x-rays come out okay? Anything broken? He said, can't break cement. <laughs> I talked to the doctor prior to the game, Dr. Chester and Dr. Nissens. They were saying that if the, puck, if the puck hits an inch above where it hit, it would shatter the orbital Socket. bone, yeah. right? And then, uh, of course, if that happens, there's a chance of real serious damage to the eye. So he's very fortunate that that didn't 
did not end up being a much worse injury than what it was. Mark Hardy is one of the toughest competitors I've ever met in the NHL. Just a real hard-nosed guy. And you can see everybody, most people I talked to today expected him to miss tonight's game after suffering that injury. McGillney's got the puck. Knocked away by Messier to Graves. Then Graves gets taken down on the play. Greg Brown pins Messier along the boards. Sabres move it, and a whistle stops play. Messier was shaken up. As Brown had him pinned against the boards. Looked like he put his face into the glass. Roger Nielsen elects to start the second period with strength on strength. In other words, Messier opposite LaFontaine. The Rangers can try and get something going at even strength. Monty puts the puck back into the corner, and Brown is working on Messier. The, oh, stick, that's the stick of Brown got Messier prior to the puck getting back around. Brown was staying with Messier, and the stick came up, clipping Mark. It appeared across the nose. No penalties, you see. That's Brown on the Buffalo bench. Brown has started Boston College, was a teammate of Brian Leach at BC, and a teammate of Brian Leach's on the U.S. Olympic team in 1988. Mark Messier. Okay. I don't believe Jeff Bukaboom has returned for the second period. So Rangers in consecutive games going with five defense. Of course, Phil Bork, and Sam, you mentioned to me between periods during the intermission, Phil Bork not dressed, so they don't the Rangers don't have that luxury of moving him back. Joe Sorella back for it. The Rangers uh, getting banged up a little bit on defense. Wells gave the puck away. That shot saved by Van Beesbrook. Randy Wood testing Van Beesbrook early. And then Wood goes right in and jams at Van Beesbrook. And is this an old war? Randy yes, Wood, sir. for some time with the Islanders, he went right in and jammed at Van Beesbrook. Wood, a feisty player, noted as a player that bumps goaltenders around a lot. And I mean, if I were the Sabres, I'd say, listen, why take a chance at waking up the Ranger machine? You'll see the giveaway here. Wood moves in. Kind of a shifty, sneaky little shot here that Van Beesbrook stops. Now watch Wood come in. Looking for the rebound, enough to irritate the goaltender. And then they went nose to nose. John Van Beesbrook coming in in a feisty manner as he gave Wood a shot with the stick. That's the best way to get the adrenaline flowing. And he would look like he had a smile on the bench. Former Islander came to Buffalo with Pat LaFontaine in the big trade early last season. Around the boards, Kovalov is tied up by Carney. Puck kept in by the Sabres, who lead it 3 2. We played a minute 40 seconds in the second period. Wells is bumped along the boards, and Brad May gets to the puck. Sorella on him. Now it's Bob Corkum working against Doug Waite. This is what the Rangers worked on. This type of play in their own zone, trying to be smart with a man on man. Backhander just wide, May around the net. And he's blocked by Sorella as he continues to battle. Good pressure from the Sabres. Now Domi able to get out of the zone, is hit by May. Keeps it working to the red line. Victor Gordiak takes it back. Gordiak comes it along the boards. Gets hit by Wells. Sorella has the puck. Long passes for Kovalov, back to Waite. Give it back to the Sabres. Powerchuk across the line with Patterson. And Patterson scores! His second goal of the game. And the Sabres lead 4-2. to two. Colin Patterson only had four goals all last season in 52 games. He's had problems in the past with a bad knee injury. Kovalov drops the puck back. You see the Sabres move right into Doug Waite. The turnover in the neutral zone. And all of a sudden it's trouble. This pass here is just a beauty. And Patterson just steps into the puck, takes a shot, and the Sabres lead by two. Mm. Aggressive, smart play in the neutral zone. A play that started with a drop pass by Kovalov back into his own zone, and then Doug Waite turned the puck over. You just see the Rangers, not a very confident team whatsoever. Colin Patterson, little used forward, had played only two games thus far this season. Put into the lineup by John Muckler because he likes him as a checking forward, and he scored two goals. <laughs> Jay Wells Never know. Being checked out. The he's it looks like he's taped up. Having a, a, a an elbow pad taped tighter to his arm above the glove. So let's say Kovalov 
Patterson with his goal, the second of the game, second of the season from Howard Chuck at 2.20. Gives Buffalo a 4-2 lead. Nice to play with Howard Chuck, isn't it? He's, he sets it up. You know, we've been talking about the play-by-play -play lounge. Well, beginning November the 10th, the play-by-play -play sports bar and restaurant at Madison Square Garden will be open to the public for lunch. Play-by-play -play features the best in sandwiches, salads, entrees, and appetizers, and serves it up garden style every business day from 11:30 a.m. to 2:30 p.m. It's lunch at the world's most famous arena. For information, call 212-465-5888. Sabres come back again. Howard Chuck stopped by Leach. Now it's Messier with Amante. Amante moves across, looks, drops it off for Leach. Knocked down by Patterson, and Howard Chuck takes over. With Bukaboom gone because of the injury, the Rangers are using Leach and Patrick as a defensive pair with the Messier line, and you would think that that should generate offense. They set up Patterson again. Howard Chuck sliding it across. Howard Chuck. Howard Chuck, who for years with Winnipeg was one of the best goal scorers in the league, has really become one of the top playmakers. 75 assists last season. That was a team record. Fukuboom, by the way, is back and on the Rangers bench. He has not seen a shift yet here in the second period. Messier stick handling in. Gave it away to McGillney. Sabres with a 4-2 lead. And three and a half minutes gone by in the second period. Van Beesbrook leaves it for Sorella. Lifting it clear. It's taken back by Greg Brown. Sabres taking advantage of Rangers' mistakes. Leading 4-2. to two. They're unbeaten in their last five games. And only one loss in their last seven. Turcotte gave it up. Brown to Andrichuk. Sorella is there. Andrichuk crisscrosses with McGilney. McGilney tied up nicely by Hardy. And Turcotte tries to take over. Left the puck behind him. Still loose. Sorella gets to it. Sweeney on him. Sorella moves it to King. King, Turcotte, and Broughton on. Cleared out of the zone. Andrew Chuck has it back. McGilney. King hooking him. McGilney staying with the puck. McGilney keeps it alive. Finds an open Corkum save Van Beesbrook. That shot by Carney stick to side. Hardy outlets. Clears the zone. Sent right back in. And Booze coming up from the crowd here. Wood setting up the fight. Or rather Presley. And Van Beesbrook reaching out to deny the shot and stops play 15 26 to go second period it's all buffalo right now we're not in the play-by-play -play <laughs> sports bar and lounge just yet we are live with mike francesa who's the host you got to be uh, looking forward to the show mike i really am sam we've been preparing for it for a long time i want to get everybody up there jd is going to be up on wednesday night Good setting, a lot of good guests, Marv, Messier, and hopefully the Rangers will pull this one out and we'll have everybody in a good mood tonight. It'll be a lot of fun. <laughs> right, John? Uh, hasn't been fun so far for Ranger fans, I don't think. John will be <laughs> dropping by regularly. Yes, he will be. <laughs> He'll work on my golf game. <laughs> Back to the action. Wayne Presley with a shot that's deflected wide and bounces down. Brian Leach picks it up. Mike's going to stay with us. Well, we lost Al Trotwood, Mike, so we'll keep you on the headset for a while. Get an extra voice in here. Bukaboom on the ice, Sam, now for his first shift here in the second period. Gartner shot, saved by Pupa, and a penalty call. Good hustle by Erickson. He was taken down, and he's shaken up on the play. And Dan Marowelli checks out Jan Erickson, so this could be more than just a minor. The Ranger fans start to cheer in the building. They're hoping for more than just a minor because they know the Rangers need some formula to try and get some offense going. It was a good shot on goal was after some good forechecking. There's a shot by Gartner. This time Pupa stays up. Erickson goes after the rebound. You see the stick. I think that's Randy Moeller. He put the stick up over the shoulder of Jan Erickson and then knocked him down. Look at the left shoulder of Erickson. There's a stick across the bridge of the nose along the left eye. And Moeller's given a two minute minor that could easily have been a double minor. Good luck for the Buffalo Sabres. They, get, they catch a break. John Erickson is all right. What about these hockey guys? You're going to have some fun with these uh, hockey guys coming up to talk to? Yeah, I really am, Sam, but I always get the feeling that whenever I'm home watching a game, 
and someone drops in the booth to plug something, I want my guys to go back and talk about the game. So they don't want me here. I'll lay out and you guys do the darn game. You know? I always say, get that guy out of there. Who cares? Let his show come up later. <laughs> and Mike's show is coming up later, immediately following New York Rangers hockey, live from the play-by-play -play here at Madison Square Garden. Rangers start the power play with Leach and Turcotte. This is the third Ranger power play. Each time a power play has started, that has been the defensive combination, or at least it's been Turcotte on the right point with Brian Leach. Turcotte moves it down the boards. Pupa reaches out and stops the puck, and Bodger gets to it. Now it's Amante in the corner, picked up by Philippe Boucher. That's Bob Corkum, number 29, pressing Leach. Bodger up the boards. Turcotte tried to keep it in, but couldn't. It's going to be an offside if the Rangers touch it. Sabres play it instead all the way out. 135 to go in the power play. 14.35 to go second period. Sabres a 4-2 lead. Messier to Gartner. Now Amante has trouble with the puck. He checked along the boards by Bodger. Boucher moves it ahead. Leach there to stop it. He's bumped by Corkum. Messier's got it. Gartner sets up down low. Messier whacked by Sweeney. Leach firing wide. And Buffalo's attacking with the penalty kill. You've got to move the puck quickly in order to defeat that style of penalty killing. Leach battles Corkum, and the Sabres clear. Good job by Boucher helping out. Just under a minute to go on the power play. Turcotte, quick release to Leach. Leach is in. Saved by Pupa. Rebound score! What an effort by Adam Graves! It's a power play goal! And the Rangers were changing. Leach moved up ice as the players were changing. Graves came off the bench and picked up the rebound. A real nice pass up ice through the neutral zone is what springs Brian Leach home free. You'll see the puck back in the zone. You see players heading to the bench. There's Van Beesbrook moving the puck up quickly. Turned out with a pass. That's the beauty. Now watch Graves come in behind. What an effort. He had Corkum all over him, Carney all over him, and he gets to the rebound. Leach had to evade his checker. There's Graves. Great effort. Good passing all the way oh, down yeah. the line. The Graves was being checked from behind. It's his secondary effort, and he almost missed the puck. It was a change-up type shot that stuck through the legs of Darren Pupa. The Rangers are back within one. Second power play goal of the game for the Rangers. Adam Graves scores it. It's a 4-3 game. And we have a whistle for a hand pass in the neutral zone. We're going to send Mike Francesa down to the play-by-play -play to get ready for a show. Mike, best of luck all season long. Thank you, Sam. J.D., I'll have see fun. you on You're Wednesday. You're not even nervous or anything. And I hope, well, I only have a couple of people left in the town who are talking to me anyway, J.D. I'll tell you, a couple more shows, we won't have anybody. You mean you don't think George Young is going to drop by tonight? <laughs> Somehow I think he's going to miss it, Sam. I'll see you guys later, thanks. Good luck, Mike. Good luck, Mike. Mike Francesa will be on immediately following New York Rangers hockey with live from the play-by-play. 4-3 the score here. Hardy back for the puck. Paired with James Patrick. Bearing down on him is Andrew Chuck. Erickson checked by Howard Chuck. 13.25 to go in the second period. Now it's Greg Brown carrying for Buffalo. Drops it off to Howard Chuck. The shot blocked by Hardy. Brown to the puck. Around for Andrew Chuck. Let it go to McGillney. And he was tied up by Nemchino. Patrick. Outlets to Nemchino. Finds Erickson. Erickson saved by Pupa and Shaky was uh, Darren Pupa on that penalty, penalty coming up to Andrew Chuck. He went in and then Chino off along the boards right near the penalty box and he led with his elbow. So the Rangers who just scored a power play goal get, have themselves an opportunity to try and tie it up. We have to take a break with 13.02 and during this break Midas reminds you for breaks done right nobody beats Midas. Loose pucks. By the way, the Fontaine has been noted is not back to the Buffalo bench. We don't know what his problem is. There's a shot that Pupa hangs on to. And you see the Sabres try to clear out the front of the goal. So that has to be a concern to Don Lever and John Muckler. Uh, LaFontaine not back here for the second period. I wonder if he's feeling the effects of the elbow from Mark Hardy that he got to the face during the first period. Came out early for the second period but has gone to the locker room. Well, maybe that's what prompted Andrew Chuck and McGillney to go into the penalty box. If, hey, if LaFontaine's not here, we might as well sit too. <laughs> right. 
Turcott across the leech, moving in. He shoots, saved by Pupa. 4-3, Buffalo leading it. 12.35 to go in the second. Rangers on their fourth power play. They're two for three. Messier back pass. Amante leaves it for Leach. Toward the net, knocked down in front. Loose puck. Amante couldn't get there. And a penalty is upcoming. It's a holding call on Philippe Boucher. Rangers will have a two-man advantage. Sabres unraveling here a little bit. Andrew Chuck in the penalty box for the elbow. McGillney for getting upset with the referee. Now Boucher, the youngster, puts his team down two men, and John Buckler just looks on. You see in front, Mike Gartner is basically grabbed as he tried to get to the loose puck. Boucher with one hand on his stick, and the call made by Marowelli. So the Rangers with a long period of time 121 to have the two-man advantage. Philippe Boucher, first round draft pick of the Sabres last year. Just 19 years old. Joins Andrew Chuck and McGilney in the penalty box. McGilney will be there for a while. He got a misconduct penalty. And now we have another timeout call. Roger Nielsen talks things over. Rangers have not been able to capitalize on five on three chances this season. Boucher is called for holding at 737. Recapping Adam Graves with his fourth goal of the season, a power play goal at 604 from Leach and Turcott. Gave the Rangers or cut the Buffalo lead to one goal. Then Andrichuk got the elbowing penalty. 54 seconds later at 6.58. McGillney in misconduct at 6.58. And Boucher at 7.37 called for holding. Now we want to take a look at the great five-on-three advantage for the Rangers. 12.23 to go in the second period. Jeff Bukaboom sitting alongside Jay Wells has not seen the ice yet in the second period. He was injured late in the first. Oh, he did see one shift. One Excuse shift. me, John. Leach to Turcott. Down low, it's Messier. Now Turcotte to Messier. Pass across. Gardner shoots wide. Well, the range is much sharper now. Moving the puck quicker and sharper. Messier. Amante set up in the slot. Messier shot deflected by Ramsey. Ramsey, Patterson, and Bodger for Buffalo. Leach with a great play to keep it in the zone. Now it's Turcotte. Back to Leach. 45 to go on the two-man advantage. Ramonte tries to put it in. It's denied by Pupa. Puck is still loose, and then it's tucked underneath by Ramsey. Mike Gartner real slow getting up. He was flat-out nailed by Colin Patterson from behind. He was leveled, knocked right down on his chest. Rangers come close to scoring, but Darren Pupa keeps the puck out. Here's Leach keeping the puck in. I don't think there's a defenseman in the league better than Leach at keeping the puck in at the blue line when the other team shoots it out. Now you'll see the puck get worked down low by Leach here. The Rangers will nearly score and watch Gartner. I'm not sure if we'll see it, but he gets flat out nailed. Well, it's over on the left side. He got crunched from behind by Colin Patterson and Gartner stays on the ice. Moeller moves it up the boards off the faceoff. Rangers keep it in. Leach to Turcott. Back to Leach. Moving in, shooting, deflected wide. Moeller and Corkum on with Bodger for Buffalo. Leach coming across to keep the puck into Messier. Pass to Gartner. Can't tee up the shot. Back for Messier. Amante's in front. Messier feeds Turcotte. Turcotte looking. Down to Messier. Two men in front for the Rangers. Amante and Gartner. It's out to Leach. He fakes. Down low, Gartner. It's off his stick. Gartner's got it. Moeller on him. Back pass. Leach stops it. Pass across to Turcotte. Down low to Messier. He looks. His pass off of Moeller. One man is back. Andrew Chuck is back on. Racing to get into the play. Shot by Turcotte is blocked. And Andrew Chuck picks it up. Andrew Chuck moving down. Turcotte is there. Andrew Chuck moves by him. Then it's blocked. And Turcotte's going to go for taking down Dave Andrew Chuck. Uh, great one minute, 21 seconds for Buffalo. They didn't allow the Rangers a real clean scoring opportunity. Bodger and Moeller on the blue line did a great job trying to kill a five on three off, which they did. And then Buffalo, once it became five on four, moved the puck up ice and Turcott took the penalty. Rangers started the five on three, moving the puck well. Then they tried low percentage plays. And there's Andrew Chuck working Turcott, who had been on the ice a long time, and he was the right defenseman on the power play. Andrew Chuck knew that. Tried a play to make Turcott take the body, and Turcott ended up 
caught for holding. That's the first time that the forward being on the point has cost the Rangers this season. Great, yes. Hey, that's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> They'll skate four aside. Sabres will go on the power play in 26 seconds when Boucher returns. 10.50 remaining in the second. It's a 4-3 game. Rangers twice have trailed by two. They tied it 2-2. Another penalty. That's a quick one. Oh, Mara a high sticking high call. Stick. And a penalty. Howard Chuck Howard Chuck grabbed right off the draw. Nemchinov a high sticking off. call to Nemchinov. And Good quickly, boy. this is evened up. And it's going to be a five on three. It's going to fight the game very soon. A lot of players clipped with sticks, and it looked like Marowelli skated right over to Howard Chuck and checked him out. Howard Chuck and Nemchinov, the two centermen. So the Rangers go from an opportunity. Oh, well, there's the stick. Nemchinov had the blade pointed up. He went to hold up Howard Chuck, but the tip of the blade caught Howard Chuck in the face, and it's a penalty. Now What's interesting now, the Rangers had a chance to tie it up with a long five on three. And in 23 seconds, they'll have to kill off a five on three just as long as the one they had. Turcotte but went at 9 10 for holding, and now at 9 14, it's them cheating off for high sticking. And the Rangers, who are down by one, have trouble with two centermen in the penalty box. It's interesting, though, is Buffalo, for their five on three, will not have LaFontaine. He has not returned to the bench. And Howard Chuck plays the point. He may move up forward, up front. And take over LaFontaine's spot. Four on three here for Buffalo. Bodger stopped the puck. Messier hustles to it. Take it away by Andrichuk. Good play by Dave Andrichuk. Bodger to Howard Chuck. Presley cutting in. Bodger is there. Now Howard Chuck with a shot. Hit the outside of the net. Andrichuk along the boards. His pass blocked by Bukaboom, who's back on. Now it's Howard Chuck. It's a five on three for the Sabres. With a minute 25 to go in Turcotte's penalty. Carried around the net by Presley. Presley, Andrew Chuck, Howard Chuck, Boucher, and Bodger for Buffalo. Leach drives it up the boards and all the way out. Any more Chucks and you might have a problem. They are playing. Buffalo is. Howard Chuck up front going with two defensemen. Jeff Bukaboom took 13 stitches right. in his thigh. He was cut. There's a deflection that goes wide. Pass down low to Bodger, getting it back out to Howard Chuck. Down to Bodger, coming out of the corner. Save Van Beesbrook, rebound hit the post. Howard Chuck's got it with 45 seconds to go on the two-man advantage. Presley pass across, missed. Howard Chuck has it again. Andrew Chuck battling Bukaboom in front. Howard Chuck to Bodger, back to Howard Chuck. He shoots. High, knocked down by Bukaboom. Can he clear? Yes, he found the opening. 30 seconds to go on the two-man advantage. Pupa headmans to Howard Chuck. Rangers have Patrick and Leach on with Messier. Dave right. Carney has come on for Buffalo. Rangers needed a change. They were able to change two players, but not Leach. Boucher, it's deflected as Van Beesbrook was almost caught out of the net. Here comes Leach breaking down. Boucher comes over. Leach to the net and is ridden down. And hard in the boards. Nothing called. Play continues. Here's a chance for Buffalo. The other way, it's Wayne Presley pulling up. And he's knocked down by Messier. A pass back is blocked. And Turcotte clears. It's a, and the teams are back in full strength. The Rangers doing a superb penalty killing job. Turcotte with a steal. Feet for Messier off his stick. Wild action. Gordia clears it out. And a penalty is upcoming. A penalty called. It's on the Rangers. Oh, boy, are they hot. Whoa. Rangers bench hot. The fans are hot. It's an elbowing call right in front of the Rangers bench. And Derek Turcotte. He's the man in the penalty box. It's all specialty teams right now as the teams go back and forth trying to score on the power play. Rangers needed a breather here, but they'll be down a man. Roger Nielsen upset with a call of Dan Marowelli on Darren Turcott. Rangers are making a goalie change right now to slow things down. Brian Leach was on the ice for four, four to five minutes straight, yet he still let a rush. He was tackled there, as you saw. And Buffalo came back the other way, five on two. This is Turcotte moving across. This is called an elbow by Marowelli. 
And the Rangers making a change. And the fans are booing a little bit as Richter goes back in. I don't think they realize what's going on here. Rangers are trying to find a way to slow people down. Actually, no. no you know Van Beesbrook's Van Beesbrook's got a leg problem. Yeah, yeah Van Beesbrook. Van Beesbrook's gone to the Rangers oh, locker room. Boy. He's limping. Yeah. He hurt himself on that Holler goal, the Kevin Holler goal up in Montreal. Oh, boy. And he's hurting right now. And with this situation, he went in after sitting on the bench, and it looks like he's aggravated a leg and a muscle pull, and it may be serious the way he's acting there. It'd be a groin, a groin injury, you know, John. Sam, to see, to see Brian Leach, you talk about thoroughbreds, then you've got the great thoroughbred. He's one of them. Man, is that something to see him work. And he played 35 minutes in Montreal two nights ago because of injury problems for the Rangers. Sweeney on the Buffalo power play was checked by Hardy. Eight minutes to go in the second period. Buffalo leading four to three. This is their fifth power play. Shot by Boucher was a save by Richter and got the quick whistle. And, and then was bumped by Brad May. May went right in, jammed at the loose puck, and that's upset some of the players. This has been a very, wow. very intense Hasn't hockey it? game. Another one of these terrible games we've been seeing this year, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> we have seen many, many good ones. Here's the shot. You'll see Richter grab the puck and may try to find. He almost jammed it loose, actually did. We have to uh, invite Don Cherry down here. That was Dr. Bart Nissenson checking John Van Beesbrook. He's in some pain. And there is Rangers medical trainer Dave Smith. It's not a sprint, it's a marathon, and he should make sure he takes care of that thing if it's a problem. Low power play continues. Minute 20 to go. The penalty to Turcotte calls for elbowing. At 11.35, puck loose in front, picked up by Nemchinov. Moving down with Bodger back. Nemchinov stays with it. Bodger picks him up. Nemchinov still with a puck, and it's taken back by the Sabres who are without Pat LaFontaine who we're told suffered a mild concussion on the elbow that he took from Mark Hardy in the first period. Howard Chuck moves out with it. Howard Chuck, Bodger, Wood, Presley and Boucher. Wells with the hit. Puck loose in front. Howard Chuck missed by Presley. Wells is taken down and Randy Wood is going to go as the penalties continue. We have another player and Boucher down. was knocked down oh, and he's, he's cut. cut. This has been a war. Not much short of he's cut just below his right eye. There was a penalty upcoming to Randy Wood who had grabbed a hold of Jay Wells of the stick of Wells. Man this is a vicious vicious game both sides both sides responsible for for a lot of stick work and it's just been mean and tough on this play. I don't think it was a stick. We'll see here. Wells try and work the puck. And I think the puck went right up into the yeah. face of Boucher just below the right eye. That was a puck that caught Boucher. The puck was chipped up by Jay Wells went right up into the face of the pinching defenseman. It's a war zone here. Oh man. Now Jay Wells before the game wrote on the chalkboard in the locker room of the Rangers if the Rangers win he'll buy lunch remember he used to be a saber and he had his credit card tacked up on the wall so he uh, he wants it bad willing to buy 23 teammates a little lunch and in our days those were long lunches by the way <laughs> long lunches it became dinners <laughs> skating for a side Rangers eventually will wind up on the power play Nemchinov shoots wide Koopa didn't see that one those long lunches it became dinners <laughs> primarily the reason why I'm sitting up here with you <laughs> Nemchinov against Greg Brown Pass intended for Patrick. Patrick has it. He centers. It's intercepted. And Bob Corcoran brings it out. Greg Brown with a wrist shot. Saved by Richter. 6.25 to go in the second. 4-3. Buffalo leading it. Rangers on the power play. As Turcotte's out of the penalty box. Gartner trying to split the defense. Was upended by Ramsey and Moeller. And Moeller clears the puck. Rangers almost got caught with too many men on the ice. Well, the third time this period, they've nearly been caught. With too many men on the ice. Leach has trouble with the puck. And it's taken away, and the backhander in front is put in. Another short-handed goal. This one by Bob Sweeney. 
Brian Leach double teamed. He tried to get the puck up to Mark Messier. The two of them had trouble handling the puck. And then Mike Richter, kind of off balance, diving for the puck, was unable to stop it. You see Richter here, look around, aggressive forecheck by Hamilov, and you see Leach simply had trouble with the pass from Mike Richter. Messier couldn't handle it with one hand on the stick. And there's the puck going in behind Richter. You'll see the puck, when Richter tries to stop it here, the thing's like a rubber ball. You see it bounce right down and away. And then Richter way off balance as the puck sneaks in behind. Just under six minutes to go in the second. For the third time in the game, the Sabres lead by two. It's 5-3. Rangers still on the power play. 40 seconds remaining in the penalty to Randy Wood. Sweeney with his seventh from Kamilev at 13-57. At the point, Leach keeps it in. Leach to Amante, saved by Pupa. As Amante just tried to drill it right through Pupa. Ramsey moves the puck around. Wayne Presley gets to it. And able to clear. Taken back by Turcotte. Pass was tipped and brought out by Presley. With Leach back, Presley shoots wide and high. Amante has trouble with the puck. Patterson on him. Look at the aggressive yeah, every four zone. checking. We've seen it in every zone with the Sabres shorthanded. Teams are now back at full strength. As the Sabres do the job. Yep. Rangers now two for six on the power play. That style of penalty killing in all zones is like playing with a loaded gun. But it's certainly working for them in this particular game. And it looks like it's worked for them all season. Sabres without Pat LaFontaine, but they've scored five. Pupa stops the puck for Boucher, feeds Bodger. Puck cleared out by Kmylev. I asked Sergei Nemchinov to give me Kmylev's pronunciation this morning. And here comes Kovalov with it. He shoots just wide. And it was tough. Kmylev is about as close as we can get. Pukaboom. Wait, knocked down along the boards. Kovalov looking for it. Gordiak trying it, rather Bodger able to clear it. Graves against Boucher. Graves shoots, saved by Pupa. Rebound carried wide by Wait. Wait puts it in front, missed by Kovalov. Puck forced out of the zone by, by Gordiak. Kovalov tripped up on the play by Bodger. Fans roar, play continues, Sabres send it all the way down, and icing is called. Well, it's been back and forth, and penalties, and injuries, and now we have a little pushing and shoving that settles down. We'll step out for a moment. And immediately go into action and not get any warm-up. And there's been some coaches who have thought about putting some form of ice underneath the stand so a goaltender can work out a little bit. Chance in front, score! Oh, excuse me, it's Domi. It's Ty Domi on the ice with Demchinov and Erickson. He surprised me. <laughs> Ty Domi gets the goal. I'm looking for Gartner. Ty Domi makes it 5-4, Buffalo. Oh, the fans love it when Ty does his thing. It's his birthday, and you'll see the work by the Rangers. Demchinov battles to move the puck. To Domi, Domi, who celebrated a birthday yesterday, celebrates today with getting a goal. You see the Rangers, all three forwards drive to the net. Nemchinov battles and moves the puck across. We Rangers make it a one-goal game again. We are definitely seeing everything here tonight. <laughs> and Domi comes on with Nemchinov and Erickson. Oh. And I apologize to him. That shot's oh. taken aside, and now what a the hit. Sabres knocked down. What a hit. Whoa. That's a mile off. He was flat out nailed. It looked like a hit by Mark Hardy. I mean, it's not even a full moon, but boy, does it seem like it. Muckler is standing on the bench. Maybe it was Domi on the hit. Domi on the hit. Pardon me. I saw Hardy move across. There's yeah. Domi. Man, he catch. It even knocked Domi's helmet off. 
It looked like a shoulder of Domi, the right shoulder. Man, he feet first. Kamilov went flying, and down he went. This is something new, too. You see the trainer with the rubber gloves on to do with injuries. Uh huh. He spotted that on the ice. NBA trainers are yes. wearing the latex gloves this year. There you see it. 1002, 1003. In Russia, Domi and Andrew Chuck have been the only person from Buffalo to talk to Domi was Andrew Chuck. Andrew Chuck talked to the referee, then he went back to talk to Domi again. Now the Rangers make a change, taking Domi, Erickson, and then Chinoff off. What a shift this was. They scored a goal. Domi throws the body check of the game, and the fans are going crazy here. Domi with his second of the season from them, Chinoff and Erickson at 16:42. It's a 5-4 game. Buffalo leading it. 2.50 to go in the second period. Pupa out to play the puck. Now the Rangers have Turcotte with King and Gartner. Andrew Chuck sending it across. I think King went to throw a body check, and he did. The Rangers have a penalty upcoming to them, I believe, as Mark Hardy stood up and tried to take Bodger. Oh, man. This has gone crazy. Penalty upcoming to Mark Hardy. He was pitching up in the neutral zone took one of the players from the Sabres out against the boards I believe Boucher and there was a penalty for interference coming to him now Sweeney he ducks out he had three Rangers upset with him in behind Mike Richter's goal it will be a power play Buffalo here as we have seen a wild one don't they know we have to get to live from the play-by-play? -play? This is becoming a long game. Now, all this hitting and sticks and everything else, and then this gets called for a penalty. The puck was right there. Hardy reaches up and just tries to hold Boucher, and that's called interference. I think he led with that. Oh, he called, glove, he called yeah. it interference. Oh, all right. He called it interference because the puck had gone by. Now, here's Sweeney. Nails Patrick on the ice, on the icing, and that upset the Rangers. They go right in at Sweeney. Not often do you see hitting like that on an icing play but the emotions running very high on both teams well, Sweeney does get a penalty Hardy's in the box it's a two minute power play by looking at the scoreboard for Buffalo Chris King. King's in there yeah. too right it's been a wild one two and a half minutes remaining in the second period Hardy called for interference King and Sweeney King and Sweeney get two minutes each for roughing. Power play for Buffalo. Is their sixth of the game? They're so, one for five. Saw a moment ago John Muckler talking to Hamilov. Hamilov says he's all right now. He's putting his helmet back on to get ready for action. Boy, oh boy, both these coaches, their insides have to be turning Ooh. with emotions in watching this game. The body work, the stick work. There have been injuries. Players are out. Players Fontaine are, is out with a mild concussion. The player is playing hurt. It's the second time in a Ranger game that LaFontaine's been injured. Remember, you go back to that hit by James Patrick on LaFontaine in the playoffs when LaFontaine was with the Islanders. And that knocked LaFontaine out with a bad concussion. Well, let's see. They put King and Sweeney have been posted on the board. Oh, okay, now they've taken down, and King is the man getting the extra two for the power play. So it's so in order. It must have been Hardy for interference, and then Sweeney for hitting Patrick, and then King for going after Sweeney. And that's why, if there's a power play goal, it would be charged to King for being in the box. Good clarification. <laughs> One of a few. Leach and Bukaboom on with Messier and Graves for the Rangers. Andrew Chuck. McGillney trying to get it through to Howard Chuck, but it's clear. Andrew Chuck, McGillney, and Howard Chuck up front with Bodger. And, and Boucher, Boucher. The kid who is coming out of the Quebec Junior League. He has a big shot, noted as an offensive defenseman, so he's getting power play time. Graves moving in against Boucher. Boucher stands with him. And Andrew Chuck reaching in for the puck. Has it. Sabres move out. Dale Howard Chuck. And at 15 to go on the power play. 145 to go on the second. Howard Chuck forced back by Nemchinov and Graves. Around the board, Andrew Chuck is there. He's got a man in front. But it was 
Taken away by Bukaboom, who clears. One minute to go on the power play. 5-4. Sabres leading it. They led 2-0. Rangers tied it 2-2. Sabres led 4-2. Rangers cut it to 4-3. Sabres led 5-3. And Ty Domi's goal is cut it to 5-4. Nice move by Patrick. By McGilney. Out for Erickson. Boucher is there. Erickson moving. Pulls up. Keeps the puck alive. Good work by Erickson. Still working. Almost taken down by Andrew Chuck. Then he falls down on top of the puck. And play is frozen. Erickson knocked about 20 seconds off the clock. This all started with James Patrick moving the puck out of his own zone nicely by avoiding McGilney. Now, this is all Jan Erickson. This is what he does best. He's been rested by not making the last two road trips, so he can do this stuff. Man, he not only knocks time off the clock and freezes the puck, but nearly, very nearly, draws a penalty. Then he stays on the ice. Well, he got his <laughs> brief rest. Bob Sweeney's going to join us in our studio. Al Trotwig resting his voice. Uh, came in and did some yeoman work, and then we had to send him home, get some okay. hot some hot tea. Talk but to Al, you know, burning the candle with both hands. <laughs> You mean on the Al Troutwood Network? <laughs> yes. The All Troutwood Network? <laughs> oh! That's my man. Come on now. 15 seconds to go in the power play for Buffalo. And a good job by Turcotte all over Keith Carney. Erickson gets there and hustles down and draws a penalty from Bob Corkum. Now, Roger Nielsen wanted Erickson to stay on the ice. He's one of the better penalty killers you'll find. And he... Just kept right on with some diligent work. Finally drew the penalty. You see Carney with the puck. Turcott works him off the puck and then allows Jan Eriksson to move in. And the foot of Corkum knocked Eric Eriksson's foot out. And Eriksson went down. Boy, oh boy. Six seconds now left in the Rangers penalty. You know what? Looked at the clock again. It's back to number 14 instead of 19. <laughs> back to Hardy, huh? <laughs> that clarification. Wrong. <laughs> no. <laughs> there won't be any power play again, goal against the Rangers, so it won't matter. Hardy will be back in six seconds. And the Rangers will then go on the power play. 36.8 seconds remaining in the second period. Messier won the faceoff, but Leach couldn't keep it in the zone. And it's taken away by Howardchuk. Moving in on Richter. Howardchuk stopped by Richter. Brian Leach, he is good at keeping the puck in at the blue line. That time he had trouble. Power play for the Rangers. Final seconds of the second period. Along the boards, it comes out to Leach with 15 seconds to go. He shoots and it's deflected on the way in and cleared out by Mike Ramsey. Leach takes over with eight seconds remaining. Tipped in by Gartner, stopped by Pupa. Amati centers for Patrick and he was bumped by Ramsey as the period comes to an end. The third period will begin with the Rangers on the power play for a minute 23 seconds. Ty Domi scoring his second goal of the season at 16.43, getting the Rangers back to within one. Each team with two goals in the second period, and at the end of two, in a very rough game, it's the Sabres five and the Rangers four. We'll be back to talk with Bob Sweeney of the Buffalo Sabres in just a moment. on the ice getting set for the start of the third period we'll take a look at the scoring summary of the second period brought to you by your tri-state gmc truck dealers the strength of experience colin patterson second goal of the game at 220 made it 4-2 buffalo then adam graves with a power play goal made it 4-3 bob sweeney a shorthanded goal made it 5-3 buffalo then ty domi from them chinoff and erickson made it 5-4 shots on goal 14 for the rangers total 27 11 for the sabers total 24 rangers are two for six on the power play in the game buffalo is one for six rangers are led in shots by adam graves with five buffalo led by randy wood with three and they are without Pat LaFontaine who suffered a mild concussion when he was hit with an elbow by Mark Hardy in the first period. He started the second period, couldn't go, and retired to the locker room. Rangers start the third period on the power play. Corkum in the box. 123 remaining. 
on his tripping minor. So the Rangers, who trail by one, have a chance to try and tie it up. Boy, John Muckler closed the doors during intermission, mm -hmm. meeting with his players. I can tell you just exactly how emotional this game has been. Turcotte and Leach, Messier, Gartner and Amante for the Rangers power play. Patterson and Corkum, excuse me, Patterson and Sweeney on the ice with Bodger and Moeller for Buffalo. Amante across to Messier, offside Rangers on the play. Bob Sweeney on the ice, came over from the Boston Bruins on waivers, and actually two teams claimed him. Buffalo finally wound up with him, but here, Boston Globe sports writer Kevin Paul DuPont, who used to be with the New York Times, said about Bob Sweeney in the column, Sweeney could be a decent NHL player if only they would change it to a no-contact game with each side limited to four skaters. Ooh, well, that is harsh. Whatever has happened, Sweeney has played pretty well for the Sabres to this point. Came into the game a plus 12. Yeah. Leach on the rush. Plays it to the boards for Messier. In front, Moeller breaks it up. Sweeney's got the puck. Sweeney's been given more room, more offensive responsibility, I would say, here. With I, I believe so. He was always in a defensive role with the with the Bruins, or seemed to be. And now with Buffalo, he, what, what happened was when he got to the Sabres, it was between Calgary and the Sabres as to which team it would go to. It ended up with Buffalo, but he scored early for them. It seemed to have given him some confidence, and he played pretty well. Turcotte took the pass from Kovalov, leaves it for Messier. Messier shoots, save, Pupa, lively rebound went past Turcotte, and the puck cleared out. Final seconds of the power play. Corkum is set to return. And he's out right now. Teams are at full strength. Patrick moving in, shooting, save, Pupa, rebound, deflected as Graves got to it. Kovalov, back pass to Hardy. Back to Kovalov, passed him to Messier. In front for Graves, deflected it wide. Played off the boards and out of the zone. A minute 40 gone by in the third period. Buffalo leading 5-4. to four. Ramsey avoids Graves. Still has the puck. Gave it away to Nemchinov, but offside as Graves was still in the zone. Boucher has just returned to the Buffalo bench. I suspect he had to get stitched up after catching the puck below his right eye during the second period. In last season, six goals in 63 games for the Bruins. Already in 11 games this season, he has seven goals for the Buffalo Sabres. Total of 15 points. There is 19-year-old Philippe Boucher. As I mentioned earlier, first-round draft pick of the Sabres last year. Then you see the bandage under the right eye. As you mentioned, the Sabres, John, certainly hoping he can add something offensively from the back line. He's got the big shot that you talked about. Here's McGillney coming in against Hardy. Tried a little shake and bake, but left the puck behind him. Boucher plays it across. Bodger with a shot. Stick save by Richter. Erickson tied up with Andrichuk. McGillney going for the puck. Hardy gets to it first, clears the zone. Bodger coming back for it. Bodger. Cross to Boucher. Met by Erickson. Sends it into the Rangers zone. And Richter stops it for Joe Sorella. Sorella. Pressed by Sweeney, who took it away momentarily. Kovalov helps out. Long pass for Wait, two-line pass. Wait just across the red line. See a, a game that's this aggressive. You wonder if John Muckler is upset with himself and not dressing Ray and Donnelly. Both took the warm-up but did not dress. Rob Ray and Gordon Donnelly noted uh, as two guys who like to mix it up. Yeah, Ray. Broke his own Sabre record for penalty minutes last season, so that was consecutive years. John Muckler, his team coach at a 500 record. He coached Boy. at a 500 record after taking over for Rick Dudley last year. Attack first style. That's what John Muckler likes. His players have a lot of respect for him. He was one of the more upset people with the fact that the players went on strike last year. He let his team know about it, but the, it seemed as though when the players ended up Coming to camp this year, they were in great shape. And I think when he's one of these individuals, when Muckler speaks, a lot of players listen. 
Brad May fires across. Don't forget, live from the play-by-play -play coming up following New York Rangers hockey tonight. The debut with Mike Francesa, a special guest, Marv Albert, who will also have Mark Messier. We hope Pat LaFontaine, if he's uh, not too shaken up, he was scheduled to join Mike Francesa in the debut, live from the play-by-play. 16.45 to go, third period, 5-4, Sabres leading it. Gordiak, Victor Gordiak, number nine. The Russian moves around, the backhander went through the crease. Keith Carney moving in, his pass comes all the way through. Smart back checking by Doug Waite, staying with May. Moeller plays it down the boards. Kovalov is there, couldn't handle it. Sorella takes over, lost it to Sweeney. Sweeney gave it away to Kovalov. May sends it back in, Joe Sorella takes over. Sorella, just in the nick of time, got it over to Wells with Howard Chuck bearing down. Doug Waite carries in. Ramsey is there. Waite puts it out in front, intercepted by Howard Chuck. He comes back out with Randy Wood. Off the corner boards. Richter stops it for Leach. Howard Chuck is there to block it. Taken by Amante. Now Waite with Domi trailing. Waite still with it. Spinorama, but did not fake out right. Greg Brown. <laughs> the Spinorama, he spun around and there was Brown waiting for him. <laughs> the puck chipped up into the crowd. Play stopped with 15.42 to go in the third. 5-4, Sabres lead it. Randy Wood signed with the Islanders as a free agent out of Yale, then traded to the Buffalo Sabres last season. He threw a pretty good hit here on Amonti. Amonti ends up going down. That was just after a hit in which Domi knocked Wood down as it was another one of those shifts with lots of hitting. Colin Patterson takes the puck. Yuri Khmylev is okay. He's back on the ice. He took the big hit from Domi. The shoulder up high. In the second period. Sam Domi's done a lot of things right for the Rangers this season. Enough to warn him ice time he has played well he has scored he's taken the body he's drawing penalties not taking bad penalties right. you can't ask for much more Puck moved by Richter but Milev is there Milev moving with it and finally it's knocked loose by Messier that was outside Gord Brossiker the linesman calls an offside on the Buffalo Sabres we look at Yuri Milev he and uh, Victor Gordiak Joining the Buffalo Sabres this season, their first season in the NHL. They were line mates with Sergei Nemchinov back in Russia. A real winner knows how to party right. Please use good sense when you drink. Know when to say when. A reminder from Budweiser. You see Randy Wood, he was sitting on the right side of the bench. He had his helmet off when we were talking about him during the last stoppage. That's not Randy. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Randy had, it looked like one of his front teeth, one of the two front teeth looked like it was chipped right up. Now, I don't know if that happened before or not, but he's now got the helmet back on. It looked like he was messing around with his mouth a little bit. That may have happened on that previous shift. Rangers have Turcott, Broughton, and King on, and King with a hit on McGilney. Great Brown carries. First shift for Paul Broughton since the first period. Boy, he is oh. had a long time. All that specialty team play and, and the longer time out, he just doesn't get ice time. Greg Brown moving in, saved by Richter. Richter backed up as Brown was heading in. Richter kept backing up deeper into his net. You know, Mike hasn't played well, and he's responsible for many of the goals against, but he did make a big, big save with the breakaway by Howard Chuck during the latter stag stages of that second period. 5-4, Sabres lead it, 14-15 to go in the third. Howard Chuck moves it on Jay Wells, who poke checks it away. Wells moves it, but Howard Chuck stops it. Now it's Brad May. May with a shot deflected, bounces off the glass. Gordiak centering pass. Erickson trying to get free, and he does. Gets it to Gartner, Nemchinov to his right. Nemchinov coming in against Keith Carney. Carney forces him around the net. Nemchinov drops it off for Gartner. He turns, his shot blocked by Howard Chuck. Hoopa. Plays it behind the net. Moeller moves it up the board. Wells able to stop it. Genoff, Gartner, Erickson all along the boards. Erickson working. Sabres trying to free it. Moeller is there. And Genoff works it loose. Sabres have it. Victor Gordia. He's stopped by Sorella. 
Our chart takes it back and is hit by Erickson. Gordia plays it into the Rangers zone, and Wells will take over. 29 shots for the Rangers, 26 for the Sabres. 5-4, Buffalo leading it. Wayne Presley gave it away to Wells. Wells sliding it down wide of the net. This will be an icing. Moeller touches up and play stops with 13.04 to go in the third period. Darren Turcott takes a breather. Well, another thing we're seeing, too, is well, Turcott had his helmet, I think, knocked off. Maybe that's why it's off. But maybe the players are taking these helmets off because it's warm. <laughs> and also, except for the last two or three minutes, it's been a very fast-paced game. Just thinking about it, remember former Ranger Lindy Ruff who went back to the Buffalo organization. He's now playing, I believe, in San Diego. San Diego, from what I hear, doing very, very well as they have a lot of veteran players, people like Malarchuk and Goal and Lindy Ruff playing for him. 13.04 remaining in the third period. Corkum and Graves for the faceoff. Sabres stay with the puck. Wood sends it around. Presley puts it in front. The deflection goes wide. Corkum. And we got a whistle. And the puck was touched with a stick above the shoulder. And I'll bring it back out of the zone for a faceoff. Jeff Bukaboom took 13 stitches in his thigh. And you believe he was cut well, with, by it, Richter's it, skate? It on? looked like when Bukaboom was trying to make the play to the side of Mike Richter, Richter moved up to make the save and his leg came up. And the goalie skates, the toe is sharper. The point of the toe of the blade is sharper than a the, the point that is not the blade itself but the point of the blade is sharper than a forward or defenseman skate that may have cut him I imagine he's had the overcane to freeze it up to try and get through the game and a good hit on Bob Corkum Amante releases Messier couldn't handle it brought back in by Bodger now Leach going for it reverses to Bukaboom 12.20 to go in the third. Long outlet for Graves. Tapped it across to Messier. Two on one with Avanti. Messier shoots. Scores! And the game is tied for the third time. It's 5-5. Five, five. Make it second time. It was tied 2-2. Two, two. Now it's 5-5. Five, five. Rangers twice tried long outlet passes. First one didn't work with Messier. This one, you see the diagonal pass out of the zone. You saw Boucher pinch. He lost the puck, and away goes Messier. You think pass. There's an opening. You see it right through the leg. It was about two feet wide. Popa is deep enough with the legs wide open. Messier looks, and he snaps it right through the legs. We're tied up at five. The young defenseman pinched in the neutral zone, Boucher. The Rangers took advantage of it. You see the life and the spirit now on the bench. That could qualify for a great teamwork play for the Canon. <laughs> great teamwork play, huh? Are you looking for a copy or a camera? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I learned from the best. 5-5, <laughs> Rangers have rallied. They've been down two goals three times. They tied it at 2-2. Two -two. They went down 4-2 at 5-3. And now it's 5-5 five -five with 12 minutes to go in the third. Messier with a seventh from Graves and Bukaboom at 7-43. Adam Graves, I think, has played a terrific game. Patrick with the puck. Drops it off for Amante. Which, excuse me, that's Doug Wade on. Wade on with Kovalov and Domi. Bob Sweeney with the puck. Hardy is there. Sabres changing. Sweeney dumps it. Patrick is hit by Milev. Puck moved around the boards. Played by McGillney, trying to get free of Doug Waite. Knocked aside. Howard Chuck has it toward the net. McGillney with a pass, and they score! What a play! Milev gets the goal, and Buffalo regains the lead 6-5 to five on some brilliant passing. From ecstasy to agony here in Madison Square Garden in a matter of seconds. The Rangers have tied it up with a beautiful play. Now you see the Rangers in their own zone. The individual play there by McGilney. Now you see the Rangers just not picking up bodies and trying to play the puck. Beautiful pass across. And Buffalo regains the lead. Once again, look at Howard Chuck, a great passer. 
finds McGilney. McGilney not over made, not only made a great pass on his backhand, but he made a great reception of that pass off a skate blade from Howard Chuck. Bang, bang, in the net, and that kid who was thrashed by Domi in the second period comes back to score. And the Rangers will have to try to come from behind once again. They have never led in this game. Puck taken away, shot by Andrew Chuck wide and all the way out of the zone. Milev with his second goal of the season. His first one was at Washington on October the 17th. Graves with a pass for Amante. Amante checked by Andrew Chuck. They both go down. Howard Chuck able to clear the zone. Leach has it. Five left with a second from McGillney and Howard Chuck. And an offside is whistled because Amante and Andrew Chuck were still entangled in the Buffalo zone. We'll step out for a moment with 10.40 to go in the third. We're the top defensive team in the NHL in regards to goals against. Suddenly giving up a lot of goals. Six to Quebec, four to Montreal, and six here to Buffalo. They're running into hot teams. and They're running into teams that last year didn't score as much as, as most teams. And I'm talking about the Adams division in particular. But, man, what a turnaround by this division. 9.56 to go as play stops. Now it's time for our Coke Classic play. And we're going to take you back to the 1974-75 Stanley Cup Finals in Buffalo. Buffalo taking on the Philadelphia Flyers in the game known as the Fog Game. Game three of the finals. Only one player on the ice with a helmet on. Does that look different or what? Wow. I remember where I was. Windermere Lake, British Columbia, because we didn't make the playoffs that year. <laughs> well, maybe we did. We, I was playing for St. Louis. Yeah. We lost to, to Pittsburgh, I believe, early. Gotta, early. We'll check it out. <laughs> no, I don't have to. No? It's fine. <laughs> Those years in St. Louis, a little blurry, do you? No, it oh, is a just... long time ago. <laughs> well, the years in New York were <laughs> very good. That hole is getting deeper, Sam. <laughs> 9.45 to go in the third. 6-5, Sabres lead the Rangers. Bodger hit by Turcotte. Turcotte's helmet is off. Drotten fires off the stick of Pupa. King for the puck. King trying to ward off the check. He got close to the eight. He's going to get called for holding the stick, I believe. King for holding the stick. Trying to fight off Corkum, and he grabbed the stick. And the Sabres get a power play. Stick holds over four weeks of action. Started with 53 called the first week, 39 the second week, 29 the third week, only 20 last week. And right now the Rangers have a big one against them. As you see, King grabbing the stick to try and push it away. He was being hooked initially. Then he reached out to grab the stick to get rid of it. And that's what Marawelli made the call on. That's supposed to be zero tolerance. Zero tolerance regarding the stick hold penalty. And Chris King gets caught. I think the numbers, as you pointed out, John, the players are adjusting to it. But uh, sometimes, as you see right there, trying to fight off that check. Just grab hold. I, is it a combination of, of trying to get balance or hold? And just trying to fight away from yeah. the opposition player who's using a stick to slow you down. And it's a habit. It's difficult to, to stop the thing. Seventh power play of the game for the Sabres. They're one for six, but lead six to five. This is an important penalty kill for the Rangers. Howard Chuck with Andrew Chuck and McGillney up front. Boucher and Bodger on defense. Messier gets to the puck, moves in with Graves. Messier still with it. Carries it back to kill some time. Forced back by Keith Carney. Leach to Graves. Rangers controlling the puck nicely. Messier was pulled across the line. Offside is called. And play stopped with 8.47 to go in the third. A minute 21 to go in Chris King's penalty. In the penalty minutes in the game. They've all been minors except uh, one misconduct handed out to Alexander McGillney in the second period. Got a 10-minute misconduct. Another good display by Messier and Graves in killing a penalty up front for the Rangers again. And we mentioned it Saturday night a couple of times in Montreal. Those two as a combination, Messier and Graves, yet to be on the ice for a power play goal against. That's uh, quite remarkable when you really think about it. Rangers have now given up, I believe, what, 16? 
One tonight. They'll make that 15. 15, right. Two line pass was whistled against the Buffalo Sabres. 8.33 remaining. In this third period, Rangers have been trying to come back since 5.17 of the first period when Buffalo scored their first goal. Rangers have trailed by two goals three times in the game. They've tied it twice. They still trail here. And then Chinov on now with Erickson. Patrick and Hardy. Patrick took down McGilney and a penalty called. Going to be a two-man advantage for the Sabres. Tripping is the call. Second time, the Sabres will have a five-on-three advantage. And James Patrick heads into the penalty box. One minute left to King's penalty, so it gives the Sabres a second chance with a lot of time with a five-on-three. Patrick gets a stick in between the legs, lifts up as McGillney tries to hop over, and it's a penalty. McGillney may have had a scoring chance if he had gotten past Patrick. So the penalty is called against the Rangers, a five-on-three. And the only thing that I think is fortunate for the Rangers and not fortunate and unfortunate for Buffalo is the fact that LaFontaine was knocked out yeah. of the game because with these five on threes and you have LaFontaine on the ice, it's it's like having a magician out there. LaFontaine coming into the game with a 10 game point scoring streak and 30 points on the season, but suffered a mild concussion, forced to leave early in the second period. Patrick for tripping at 1134. Messier, Bukaboom and Leach for the Rangers. Howarchuk, Andrichuk, McGilney, Bodger, and Boucher for Buffalo. Howarchuk won the faceoff. Bodger with the puck. Andrichuk battling Bukaboom in front. Howarchuk sets up Bodger. Save. It was blocked. Bukaboom sliding across. Blocked the shot. Rangers clear. See the defenseman Bodger just give the puck to Howarchuk, and that makes a lot of sense. He should be the quarterback in the offensive zone on this power play. Andrew Chuck back to Bodger. Bodger controlling. Now to Howard Chuck looking. Cross ice speed. Save Richter on the shot by Boucher. Andrew Chuck battling Bukaboom. Took it away. Boucher able to stop it along the boards. He's got it. Cross to Bodger. 20 seconds to go on the two man advantage. Howard Chuck moving in. Feeds Bodger. Down low McGillney in the corner now. Back for Bodger. 10 seconds to go on the two-man advantage. McGillney with a puck. Out to Howard Chuck. Feeds Bodger. Looking. Back to Howard Chuck. Now Bodger. Down to McGillney. And it hit the post. King is back on. It's a five on four. The puck was touched with a stick above the shoulder by the Sabres. Will bring the face off out of the zone. Credit the Rangers with taking away the slot. Every shot that Buffalo attempted was from an angle just like this. What a snapper this was. That went off the arm of Richter, hit the goal post, and out the other side. And you see Boucher, the defenseman, he moved right in on the play. But it seemed as though Howard Chuck would line up in the middle of the ice at the blue line and then pass the puck out to the sides for the one-time shot. A five-on-three getting all bad angle shots doesn't make a lot of sense. That's all the Rangers would give. Give Buffalo on the play. Howard Chuck to stay on the ice, it looks like, with 56 seconds remaining and the penalty to James Patrick. If the Rangers get out of this thing, it'd be two real good penalty kills with Buffalo having the five on three advantage for at least a minute both times. Actually, the first one was a minute 21, and this one was a full minute. And Chinoff and Sweeney for the faceoff. Sabres take control. Start to move up ice. Doug Bodger carrying the puck. Erickson is there. Able to block the pass and take the puck away. And he's bothered by Sweeney. Here's Nemchinov across with the puck. Cutting in. He's checked by Bodger. Loose puck clear to side as Wells was cutting in going for it. Hardy is back. Howard Chuck checked by Erickson. Forced to give away. Outlet to Nemchinov with Carney there, Nemchinov moving in. Controls, peels back with the puck. Still with it, surrounded by Sabres. Knocked loose to Randy Wood. 15 seconds to go on the Buffalo power play. Carney taken down by Bukaboom. Hardy drives it all the way down, and that's going to do it. Big, big penalty killing for the New York Rangers. Sabres now one for eight on the power play in the game. Patrick is back on. Teams at full strength. 6-5, Buffalo leading it, 6-20 to go on the third. Shot deflected, Bukaboom's got the puck. Pass across, Turcotte didn't have a stick, finally got one from the other end of the bench. 
Went to one side of the bench, kept skating, went to the other, and finally got one. Bob Corkum brings it in. Corkum lost it to Turcotte. Six minutes to go on the third. 6-5, Sabres lead it. It was 3-2, Buffalo end of one. 5-4, Buffalo end of two. Rangers tied it at five on Messier's goal. And then Filev giving Buffalo the 6-5 lead. Up in the air, Richter gloves it, drops it off for Bukaboom. Bukaboom and Leach move up. Turcotte intercepted by McGillney, saved by Richter. Leach fires across. Amanti with Kovalov. Amanti falls down. Messier trying to find the puck. He's got it. Couldn't find Leach. Bodger sends it away. Kovalov has it back. Squeezes past Bodger. Howardchuk tries to clear. Knocked down by Patrick. Moving toward the net. Pass in front. One-handed shot by Kovalov was blocked. Sabres break out with Hardy back. Howardchuk for McGillney. Hardy breaks it up. Patrick knocked away by Andrichuk. Two on one. Andrichuk stick handles it. Saved by Richter. Andrichuk did everything, and Richter stopped him. Kovalov with a puck along the boards. Taken back by Randy Moeller. 4.50 to go in the third. 6-5. Sabres. Bob Sweeney across. He shoots. Glove saved by Richter. Hardy checked by Sweeney. Patrick has the puck. He's pressed by Brad May. Sweeney takes it. He centers. Went all the way through, and the Rangers break out. Messier down the right side. Ramsey trying to get back. Messier shoots. Save. Rebound played by Bob Sweeney. 420 to go in the third. 6-5 Sabres. Hardy sends it back in. Messier jumps by Moeller. Pupa moves it up the boards. Graves there to stop it. Graves tied up with Gordiuk. Gartner. Court. Graves. Graves shoots. Save by Pupa. Graves again, and the net is knocked off. Oh, the save of the game. We saw one and one end by Richter on Andrichuk, but Pupa keeps the Rangers from tying it up. He robs Adam Graves. The goalies who were victimized earlier with some bad goals have come up with some great saves here. Doesn't make sense, does it? Here's Andrichuk, a two-on-one. It's one-on-one -on -one now with Richter, and Richter had to stretch all the way out to make the play. Now watch Graves here. Fake the shot. Poop is down and out, but he's able to stretch back across and rob Adam Graves. Terrific goaltending, even though it's been 11 goals scored. Did Carney help out by uh, knocking the net off the uh, moorings there? Not a bad idea. Wells gets to the puck. Four minutes to go, long shot, blocked in front. Erickson to the rebound, he turns and shoots it. And goes wide, deflecting wide. Wells pinches in. Puck in the corner, comes around to Bodger. Around fourth, Milev. Milev looking for Colin Patterson. Patterson with two goals in the game, drops it in the Rangers zone with 3.40 to go in the third. 6-5, Buffalo, Richter couldn't handle it. Corkum plays it off the boards, and Erickson hustles for it. Bukaboom looking for it, so's Randy Wood. Bukaboom hit by Corkum. Presley gets to it. Side of the net is picked up by Erickson. Ahead for Nemchino. Now Tony Amante brings it across. He's bumped by Howard Chuck. Presley has it back for Buffalo. Into the Rangers zone it goes. Richter stops it, steers it to Brian Leach. 3-10 to go in the third. 6-5 Buffalo. Messier with Amante. Runs into Ramsey. Ramsey goes down. Amante against Howardchuk. Graves for Messier. Save made by Pupa. Patrick gets to the puck. Behind the net. Messier out in front. Save by Pupa. Well, Messier is going now. He's flying. Here's Leach down the slide. He shoots. Save by Pupa. And he holds on. 2.47 to go. The Rangers pressing for the tie. Denied by Darren Pupa. 4th time in the last 6 games Rangers have had at least 38 shots on goal. Buffalo has 34. Messier has had a pile of them here in the third period. Yeah, he's running, he wins the faceoff, running people over, winning faceoffs, setting up plays. He is really rolling here in the last few minutes. McGillney against Leach. McGillney shoots wide around the boards 235 to go. Patrick moves the puck out of the zone. It's taken back by Andrew Chuck to Moeller. Sweeney now Leach takes over. 2.25 to go. Patrick out for Amante off the skate. Pushes it ahead. Messier racing for it. Moeller is there to clear it. Sabres with a 6-5 lead. Sweeney has the puck. He has a shorthanded goal in this game. 
Andrichuk against Patrick. Amante going for it. Stopped by Ramsey in center ice. He lifts it back into the Rangers zone, but over the glass into the crowd, stopping play with 2.03 remaining in the third period. The Sabres leading the Rangers 6 to 5. And don't forget, coming up next, it's live from the play by play. Hello, everybody. We're just putting our finishing touches as Natalie leaves on our first live from the play-by-play -play show. Coming up right after the Ranger game, Marv Albert, Mark Messier, Chris Rock from Saturday Night Live, Ed McCaffrey from the Giants, Fred LeBeau, and if his head's okay, hopefully Pat LaFontaine. Right after the Ranger game, so be with us. Okay, Mike. I think I'll take a walk up there and see yeah, what's going looks on. Pretty nice. Hey, Ed McCaffrey, well, it wasn't George Young, but at least somebody from the Giants will talk to Mike. <laughs> Ooh, there's a Rosen zinger. <laughs> By the way, Brian Leach has a point in this game that ties him with Phil Housley for number one in scoring amongst defensemen. Under two minutes remaining in the third, 6-5 Sabres. Rangers have lost two in a row and right here in danger. And having it go to three. Hardy for Gartner, 140 to go. Off the end boards, Turcotte checked by Ramsey, Gartner centers, Kovalov couldn't get there. Puck knocked down by Bukaboom, minute and a half to go. Now Hardy, Kovalov on the move, Kovalov weaves his way in, Kovalov against Bodger. Bodger rides him to the boards, Kovalov stays with the puck, keeps with it, Bukaboom trying to help out. Penalty coming up, Boucher just flattened Turcotte who backed into him on the top of the goal crease. Cross-checking call. The Rangers now get the face-off in Buffalo's zone. Messier's line's been on the bench, so they're rested, as has Leach been. Get Turcotte back in, and there's the cross-check. Gets up, backs in again, but the arm's already up from Marowelli. And you can see the expression from the rookie along with Darren Pupa about the call. So the Rangers now uh, will probably get the Messier line back on the ice. They've been sitting. They're delaying now as long as they can to rest that line even as much as possible along with Brian Leach. So 110 remaining. Well, 110 remaining and they're trying to uh, figure out when Mike Richter will go to the bench. So the Rangers will have a power play advantage and will make it a six on four skating advantage when Mike Richter is pulled with the Rangers trailing six to five. What's interesting here now, the Rangers, will they put Turcotte on the point with Leach or will they put Patrick on the point with Leach? It looks like Turcotte's going out and it also looks like Richter's going to the bench right now. You're right. So now will it be five forwards? No, Patrick goes on with Leach along with four forwards. The Rangers just simply should not lose a battle for a loose puck when you have two extra men up ice as we see in this situation. So what has been a crazy game should finish wildly. Rangers net is empty. Boucher called for tripping at 18.50. Eighth power play of the game for the Rangers. They're two for seven. Messier, Amante, Gartner, Turcotte, Leach, and Patrick on for the Rangers. Sabres have Bodger, Sweeney, Corkum, and Moeller. Randy Moeller's seen a lot of ice time, in particular against Mark Messier in the third period. Kovalov and Nemchinov look on. Messier will try and draw it back to Patrick on the right point. Sweeney and Messier. Now Buffalo can't get aligned here properly, and they want Moeller on the behind the defense, behind the center, and Messier wins it. Leach looking. With the shot, blocked in front. Shot by Turcotte, saved by Pupa. Turcotte raced to the puck, and Pupa made a glove save. That's a terrific save. The Rangers did everything right. Turcotte, wearing that new helmet, lost it about four times in this game. Messier wins a draw back to Patrick. Patrick moves the puck over to Leach. Now the action starts. In front, you see Turcotte. He just banged it. Pupa went down, covered as much net as he could. Not a hard shot, but towards the goal, and the Rangers have the extra bodies. Turcotte tried to chip the puck up high, which he did, but it caught Pupa in the chest. Now, Messier, I would think, would try exactly the same thing to get it back to Patrick. Will Patrick go to Leach or not? I don't know. Rangers have been good on the faceoff. Messier wins it again. Patrick has it. Less than a minute to go in the third period. 6-5 Sabres. Gartner off his stick. Messier to Patrick. He shoots. Save. Pupa. Rebound missed by Amante. Gartner's got it. Now Leach. 
Gartner along the boards. Avanti side of the net. Picked up by Bodger. Back to Gartner. Shoots from the angle. It's blocked by Bodger. Patrick moves in. His pass tipped. Messier in the corner. Back to Patrick. He's got some room for the shot. Save. Pupa. Rebound. It's in. Score. It's a power play goal. Pupa got a piece of it. Bodger's arguing it didn't go in. It went in. It was over the line. Both the red light came on and Marowelli signaled that the puck was over the line on the stick side of Darren Pupa. It was over a few inches. Nice play by James Patrick to help work to keep the puck alive and moving when the Rangers had the power play and the goaltender pulled. Here's the shot. Now there's Patrick. He kept the play moving. He kept it going. See the puck in the corner. Messier's there. No panic by the Rangers. Here's Patrick again with the shot. You see the play in front. You'll see the puck barely go over the line completely, no doubt about it, before it's pulled out. A power play goal. The Rangers tied up at six. There's Tony Amonti. The puck's over the line without, without a doubt for Amonti, his second goal of the game. The Rangers tied up. What a wild one this has been. James Patrick with some good work to keep the puck alive a number of times as the Rangers tie it. Third power play goal of the Ranger, for the Rangers in the game. They pulled the goalie, got the six on four skating advantage, and they have tied the game for the third time. 2-2, two, 5-5, two, five, five, now 6-6 six, six, with 31 seconds remaining in regulation time. McGillney oh, shoots the fucking Andrew line. Chuck just took a bad penalty. He was about to be hit by Bukaboom, and he reached up and just cross-checked Bukaboom across the head. And you're going to see what could be a major penalty here to Andrew Chuck with just 25.2 seconds left. And the Rangers will have a power play to end the third period. And it could go well into most of most of the overtime. Uh -oh. Bukaboom is very upset. Bukaboom went in to hit Andrew Chuck, and Andrew Chuck just took a stick and caught across the side of Bukaboom. The side of the head make that. Bukaboom. Now, what's interesting is what is the call? Is it a All minor, right. or a major, or a double minor? I don't know. See here, Andrew Chuck looks up. He sees Bukaboom coming in, and you see the stick across the side of the head. Two minutes, Buffalo. Gets a two-minute penalty to Dave Andrichuk. So with 25.2 seconds remaining in regulation time, Rangers get another power play. The puck had gone by Andrichuk. You see there, Bukabu moves in. And Oof. there's the cross-check across the ear. It's an instinct that players have. When another player is about to hit you, you bring your stick up. But in that situation, Andrichuk gets caught. Rangers... We'll finish up the third period on the power play. The unprotected portion, obviously, in the on the helmet area, the ear, and that hurts badly. And you can see the pain written all over Jeff Bukuboom's face. Andrew Chuck for high sticking at 19:34. We're in regulation time, tied 6-6. The penalty would carry over into overtime. Rangers win the draw, and Gartner moves in with Leach. Passes through. Leach taken down. And Pupa covers the puck for a faceoff. Sets up the draw again. Deep in the Buffalo zone. Why well, Rangers showing a lot of pace here late in the game. Off the draw, Brian Leach just jumps right in. See Randy Moeller along with Ramsey knocking Leach cleanly off balance. That faceoff deep now in that Buffalo zone. Messier comes on. He'll take the draw here. He won two big draws on the opposite side of the ice late when the Rangers needed one on the power play to tie it up. But they were both against Sweeney. Now he goes against Howard Chuck, and Howard Chuck wins. He's one of the best. Round for Colin Patterson trying to clear the zone. It was blocked, and he fires it out and into the Buffalo bench. Another faceoff in the Buffalo zone with 10.8 seconds remaining, and Colin Patterson upset with himself. Now will. Not being able to clear the puck all the way down on the power play attempt that last goal for the Rangers the tying goal Amonti with his seventh his second of the game second power play goal 1928 
Make it the third power play goal of the game for the Rangers. 1928, the time of the goal. Timeout now called by Roger Nielsen with 10.8 seconds left. I don't think you'll see him pull his goalie now. <laughs> no. We saw him do it with over five seconds left in a previous game with a face-off deep in the other team's zone. It looked like John Muckler was going to leave Howardchuk on the ice for the draw, even though it's now on the other side to the left of Pupa. And remember, that's where Sweeney lost two to Messier, two face-offs, that is. Ramsey, Patterson, Andrichuk, Patterson again, Sweeney, and Kmylev have scored for Buffalo. Amanti, Waite, Graves, Domi, Messier, and Amanti again for the Rangers. How, how do you say that Russian name? Smila. Or actually, you got the Sergey <laughs> said Khmoyev. <laughs> but I couldn't say Khmoyev all night long. I'm there's, sorry. There's one of those guys in Boston that I have no shot at saying. Bartolnov. That's easy Bartolnov. compared to uh, Khmoyev. <laughs> I had to practice Khmoyev all you the way down saying, to Patterson. You, the, the you, Palisades Parkway. You keep saying those names, I'm going to have to wear a shield over here. <laughs> Final seconds, regulation time. Rangers on the power play. It went off Kirkcott's stick. Gartner bumped into the linesman. Kirkcott races for the puck, and we're going to overtime. Whoa! It's been comeback night. The Rangers fighting from behind three times in the game, down by two goals. They have rallied to tie, and we are going to overtime tied 6-6. We'll be right back. Rangers third overtime game of the season one win and one tie Buffalo's fourth one win and two ties last time these two teams met in overtime was last season November 29th in Buffalo and what happened Graves stop Messier scores Rangers win in overtime in Buffalo Rick Dudley was not a happy man that was toward the end of his tenure as head coach and he's coaching in San Diego now I believe too anyway you saw Mark Messier sitting on the bench he sat there as long as he could until he now prepares for this face off to rest and here we go shot 43 34 in favor of the Rangers through regulation time Rangers on the power play to start overtime a minute 25 remaining in Andrew Chuck's cross checking penalty or excuse me high sticking it was called. Leach and Turcotte, Messier, Gartner, and Amante for the Rangers. Buffalo with Patterson, Wood, Boucher, and Bodger. Behind the net, Boucher left the puck there. Bodger moves it around. Turcotte stops it. Try to get it to Amante. It was tipped by Wood, and it's cleared by Boucher. Turcotte's got the puck, and now Brian Leach. Leach pulls up. Rangers try to set up the power play. We are in overtime. Boucher checks Avanti. Messier's got the puck. Gartner sets up in front. Leach to Messier. Messier looking. Trying to get it to Avanti. Comes across the Turk. He scores! The Rangers win! It's a power play goal! Fighting from behind all night long, win it seven to six. Oh, baby, what a game! This is the medicine the Rangers needed. Oh, they fought back and fought back and fought back, and this was a bitter battle. This one, Rangers win in overtime. It was a wrist shot by Darren Turcott. A pass that got to him accidentally. The original play, the puck ricocheted back the opposite direction across the Turcotte. He skated in, grabbed it. A wrist shot, low wrist shot to beat Pupa. See, the puck is in deep. Now you see Messier with it. He'll try, I believe, to go back or make that back to Amante, and you'll see the puck ricochet right back off of Boucher to Turcotte. Now it's Turcotte and the goaltender, and a snapping wrist shot low to the stick side beats Pupa. Rangers win. Darren Turcotte gets the game winner at 58 seconds of overtime. We'll be right back. <laughs> 